Okay. <laughs> you gotta just keep Catherine a minute here. Okay. Well, you can just say it, right? Yeah, I can mark it up. Okay. Keith Randall? Here. Pat Markovich? Here. Deidre Comey? Here. Jennifer Hederly? Here. Stacy? Ashlyn? Here. Abby Knopper? Here. Ed Lowing? Not here. Ed Lowing? Not here. <laughs> Okay, so our agenda today is work. Uh, we're going to start at the handout that I want you to have the park priorities 2014. This is what we did last year at the retreat. All these, we're going to walk through these and say, are they still relevant and what priorities? Uh, ideally, we'll have some type of priority on it. Prioritization is just so nebulous that it's going to be, I don't want to go into a lot of detail of highest priority, lowest priority, but of course, priority would be good. And then at the end, on the very last sheet, I guess it would be page four, we have additional ones that staff has put in, three ones that we've identified. Because any other ones that we've identified, we can insert those. So you don't want updates on the last year's? We just want status? I, I think Is it still, do we want to continue it? Yeah, do we want to do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just say a couple, a couple of words just to get it started as well. Um, first, I wanted to say that I can't be here for the whole retreat, unfortunately. There's another event at Stanford uh, University today about uh, like public safety net. And we've, um, Dr. Shashank Joshi, who's on the leadership team, has gathered some of the lead thinkers around suicide prevention and youth well-being from around the country. And there's, there's eight of them really fascinating individuals. And they're there. We have about 40 people in this, this meeting, including some of the key leaders. And I had to present there this morning early, but it's just um, it's a unique opportunity. So it got put together. In the last couple of weeks, and that's why it was a conference, so I will be heading back there. So that's one thing I want to mention. Two, uh, we have some binders for you that you can take home. These are the binders. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> so this, this is obviously online, and you can access it there too, but it relates to the Parks Master Plan. Look <laughs> at these bags. It's not going to fit, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, this relates to the, the, the data about the Parks Master Plan and trying to put it in, 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 a, in a way that we can access it a little more easily, and particularly important when we get to prioritization and, and um, defining conclusions and findings, that we can refer back to um, the data that's it's not complete, but there's a lot that we're gathering, and the survey data is in here as well, which we'll be talking about on Tuesday, so you'll have a chance to look at that with the other data, demographic data, which are things in your binders. Uh, we'll, we'll keep adding to that. So I um, wanted to mention that also to, to keep an eye on this as well. And he was just talking, talking about it. The thought I had about the uh, first three pages of the 2014 priorities is to think about them, um, uh, if, if they are still relevant for this year, and are they still actionable for this year in terms of a policy issue. Um, and a good example of what Rob was talking about was the um, 7.7 acres. It's still relevant going forward, but we probably won't have any action until that hydrology study comes back. And so we're on hold until that comes back, so we're going to classify it as pending as opposed to completed or action ongoing. So, um, so, the, so I think reviewing these, having a discussion about you know, what, what is the commission thinking? Because there may be differences of opinion about this too. Are, are, is it pending? Is it really relevant? Not opinions may vary on this. So talking through those things, and if there's agreement that yes, it's still highly relevant, we can still do some work around it this year, then we move it over to, to 15. And then of course, if you're thinking about uh, this coming year, you may have additional interest that you can bring up, and then can be added as well. So, um, I'm not sure the best way to, we do have lunch here, so, and this is, yeah, you didn't see this in advance. One, one approach might be to uh, get some lunch and a little bit of a working lunch while everybody sort of reviews this and reads through it before we really get into it, which could be helpful. And while the pizza's hot. That's because it's a hot item. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the other thing I want to go about, um, 
I do want to go through some priority, and I think the easiest way to prioritize it is not by importance, because that's a nebulous, but action, timeline. Mm -hmm. And the highest actions will be the ones that will be in the next couple meetings, and the ones that will be three or four months from now will be both priority. And so, otherwise we'll be debating what's more important. <coughs> I'm never agree more on that. I think timeline is crisper, so we'll we think about these uh, think about timeline. Okay, let's take a break, have lunch, and be back. Start walking down the topics and then discuss relevancy on each one. Uh, dog parts, I think that's highly relevant. Uh, that's ongoing. And Hopefully so, we'll wrap up this year. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do we have an estimate next time that we go to commission? Um, yeah. I think we'll have an update this month and then depending on, I would say probably realistically, June, what are we, or March? May or June. So that's right. Or after the public outreach, or do you think we should talk to? Maybe we should. Maybe we should talk about it before we go to the public, big public meeting. So maybe April. When is Next the meeting? Month. The meeting is yeah. what? April or May, I think. Your, your outreach meeting? No, we haven't set the outreach meeting. So the question is, just should we meet as a commission before we do that, or should we meet as a commission after? We do that? My vote is after because we've already talked about it. And then we can bring the results and we will have spoken to all the stakeholders and then Okay. All right. So May Has June. anything changed the last time we talked about it? Uh we've we've, changed we've had a couple meetings, no. But has the our outlook hasn't changed at all? The things we're considering are still still yeah. there have been some minor some additional okay. options. Okay, we so have stakeholders meeting. So. I think you should be part up to us. We are going to. Mm -hmm. Let's do it all at once. Like but we won't have a full discussion on it. It'll just be an ad hoc, at the end, an ad hoc uh, okay. update. Yes. Okay. So let's put down June as the next time we expect to okay. see an agenda item. Then you guys will talk, when you guys have your, are you calling it a community input meeting? What, what is the meeting called? It? Is it for state public public outreach? No, it's for everybody. Public outreach. So you'll yeah. notify the whole commission and we can do yeah. it. Okay. Next one is the website. Uh, are we happy with the website, or is there still work to do? There's still, there's still work to do. It's moving very slowly. So let's put it. But I don't think there's a lot of work to do. No, I, don't think I think it needs to go to the commission with oh. all. I mean, if you're just looking. Yeah, if we don't, yeah, if we don't yeah. need to discuss it. Uh, once we have it in a form that we think is final, if we we'll run through it right, yeah, and see if we don't want to make any changes. Okay. So, so we declare it, the, the revision complete in the maintenance mode is no longer actively being redesigned. Right. Then we should report on that when we get to that point. But the question is, if you want to stake in the ground so we get to that point. Yeah. And you guys don't feel like you need any more input from us. Is that correct? You pretty much know I what you're doing. doing. Yeah. The last okay. couple of times we haven't really gotten a lot of input, and I think we've integrated it. So. My input is just, we don't have to at all. Yeah, my only input, I emailed you guys in separately just saying some of those links weren't working. That's right. Okay, good point. Point. Yeah. I didn't yeah, see it. You got this fixed. Yeah. It's, it's so always informative. Back. Oh, I'm sorry. I just think it's always informative to go go to the website and try to click around because occasionally people say, how do I get in touch with Parks and Rec? I always say, go to our website. But What's strange right now is when you go into the website, that you have to click agenda and um, on the home site, it's not obvious how to get the agenda and that comes. To scroll, you know, to get to the current agenda, which is mm -hmm. not ideal. Yeah. You know, yeah. The current yeah. thing should probably be high on the... Above the pictures? That, that's the thing, I mean, is no, it? But, but even if you go to the city website and go to Parks and Rec, you don't end up with the Parks and Rec page with right. the That's pictures. the problem. That's the problem. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you say May <coughs> for the website. Okay, I can... I can agree with that here. Okay, so May, yeah. we'll have some type of yeah. agenda item. CIP, so Rob, you're saying that the CIP's been sent, are going to come so far? Yeah, so um, the timing for the CIP, so right now we're in the process of trying to get the CIPs that we submitted and worked with the commission on in terms of priorities and staff priorities through the the process, which is, goes to the finance committee um, and, and 
May, right there, and then the city council in June, and then and then we sort of start over and start working on the, the next five-year plan. So it's likely it will come up again. Um, Would that be the 2017? Right, but we start thinking about that in fall, really. And we're trying to, and last year was, was good actually, but after the after summer we immediately sort of started engaging in a conversation about the CIP plan. So that's one thing that can happen and then report back of course on how uh, the approval process is going, which you can also attend those, those council meetings and participate. Okay, so the next item will be fall of 2015. Yeah. Uh, so we call it, call this one complete, but then we roll it over to have a new entry for 2015. Probably, probably should say yes. Yeah, CIP uh, 16, 16 to 19 is complete. 17, 16, 20. Yeah, 16, 20. 16, 20. So then we would go 17, 21. Okay. Next is community gardens. Mm -hmm. Stacey and I did a lot of research on things, and I, I do think we should probably write that up. Come back with recommendations. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the one thing I was really <coughs> negligent about getting done was I was had meant to, I'd written a letter to send to PAN, the Palo Alto neighborhood, to the PAN leaders to get some feedback, just to kind of see who the leaders are in the different neighborhoods for interest in community gardens. And I never got my email to go to the right place. I was a little bit sure. confused on who to send it to. I tried to send it to the head of the Midtown Neighborhood Association. I didn't make it to her for some reason. I might have a wrong email address. Sherry? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think it just didn't get to her. So I'd like, I would like to do that again. That was just an outreach to try to figure out who the key players are. I'll send you later. Okay. Is there a part, does she have a part, is, it, is she the direct head or does she have in a partnership? I think it's her and Annette, my kids said you're very too. Yeah, I think okay. it's both of them, and I'll just get that sent out. And I, I think it's important for me to follow up because there is interest emerging from the master plan. It would just be nice to kind of, I don't have my finger on the pulse as far as level of interest outside of our survey. Do you have a timeline to report on that? Well, if I send that, if I get that from Pat and we already have it written out what we wanted to send out. Okay. But that's, so not, that's not recommendations, that's, that's an outreach That's phase. an outreach. So we could probably, depending on how it goes, we could aim for the April meeting. Are we looking at yeah. upgrading the current facilities, adding the facilities, or getting input, just generic input from the users? <laughs> we were still at the input phase. The input phase. But we, through our research, we at least had cataloged what we have, and we, we need to just write up a recommendation based on that. So it's two arms. One, two pieces. Two pieces. Yeah. pieces. Research so far and then community outreach. And then the community so what the outreach might take longer than I think. Okay, let's say May. If we get it done early, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Just one thing Peter just reminded me that the MIG that consultants are coming back, I'll be here for a few days uh, early next week, and obviously we're there pushing you. We set up a number of uh, meetings for them to meet with just different stakeholders and things. And community gardeners is one of them. I think we've. How many gardeners are going to have at the meeting next week? Well, he only wanted like the gardeners on center stuff, like. Five, five of the Did you gardeners. contact. So you contacted people from your known list of gardeners? I think they're the, the lead sort of community uh, volunteers that are liaisons for each garden. Well, the problem is we're trying to figure out in the south of Palo Alto where there are no gardens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this may not get at that. Yeah. But I, I mentioned, can you make, let you know when that meeting is? I would love to go, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you can. Yeah. 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 Oh, Stacey yeah. and I. Yeah. Is it next you're saying it's next week? Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Okay, thank you for letting us know. That would be good Tuesday. to move on. Two, three. Two to three at Lucy Sturgeon on Tuesday. Tuesday, um, two to three? I think I can make that. Are you Lucy Sturgeon? Yes. And the fireside room. Fire 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 what? I'm sorry, what room? Fireside. Fireside. It'd be nice if you could just forward us the outreach letter so we sort of know what you said to them. Okay. Just, just before we arrive, like how you yes. framed it. Okay. Rob, what is the status? We had a CIP in 2015 for community gardens. 
the irrigation replacement. That got approved. Okay. And, and it works on your the ir uh, replacing the irrigation system? Yeah. Uh, had a community meeting, um, I don't know, now, like three or four months ago. Uh, showed the gardeners that includes Reconada, uh, Pardee, and Johnson Park. Yeah, that's Basically going to replace the hose bibs and all the ear or the it's not irrigation, it's just the main uh, water or pipe that goes out there. So uh, we decided on feedback from the meeting to hold off on the work until fall, early fall, because that's when their downtime is for their garden, uh, I guess for the potential of the garden to be growing plants. So uh, uh, it's still on and it will happen sometime probably in October is when I'm imagining around the date that it's going to be. So. Um, so yeah, it'll take a little work. Some of those gardens, the Swinkonada and the Party Park are fairly large and the amount of piping that has to go into those things is fairly extensive to get back to the network of hose bibs that are out there. So. Mm -hmm. And is this something that could take a week to do or a to do, you know, I guess? I would say for the bigger gardens, it's going to probably take about three to four weeks to do for each one. And then for Johnson Park, it'll probably take like a week, a week and a half to do. Most of it's trenching, um, so. Okay, so May, May 2015, we'll talk about what we got on the foundation and how for that. Sterling now. Okay, so um, Darren, I think, made one point of contact. So it was before our joint meeting with City Council, and yeah. then I don't know. I, th I forgot if I got back to you and follow up on that. Yeah, I to. We were it. so busy on Basie Park, yeah. really, is what happened. So I really, I'm very anxious to kind of settle this. You know, where do we stand on certain, because it is, a lot of people have had their eye on that land for both the dog park and community garden for years now. And we've never really fully resolved it. So maybe we should, I, so it's ongoing. But we should look back and couple of months, no later than, I mean, if we're putting other things on the table, maybe put it, you know, shortly after that, because we didn't have much to say, the findings were pretty well, limited I, well, as far as I, what we could do with the land. Well, I think we need, what we need, what was decided in the joint city council meeting was to bring it up to another level and look at it. So there's really not a lot for Commissioner Ashland and I to do on that, but Darren, if you wouldn't mind doing that when you get a chance and getting back to us. So maybe once you go, pursue that, we can have a, a meeting, just the three of us, or you can decide to present to the commission and skip the ad hoc. Do you okay. want to have an involvement? So what you're that? waiting is Darren. Yeah. And what we have to get is what we're allowed to do. It, yeah. and, and maybe the, I, the, the tone that I got from the joint meeting was pushing back a little bit, yes. not just having public work say, oh, that's just for us. Right. Utilities kind of give you yeah. a major reaction yeah. to say, we're not allowing yeah. anything there. We have easements and we have use for the land, that's it. And that's, and that's what the council's message was. Take that up the road and, and keep working. So I'll work with um, uh, Rob and see if we can make a little headway with utilities and see where we can go. I, I would also recommend, under the same kind of rubric of a piece of property we're not quite sure what we're doing with, very nearby is a little strip of land that we had once talked about for a dog room. Same kind of analogy, utilities says, no, we can't use that. Um, it's part of our lease. If you want to take it over, it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. You guys can use it for whatever you want. It's just an aesthetic piece of turf right next to the skate bowl area uh, end of Greer Park. And I'm across not just the street. across the street. Yeah, there would be a great side We said that would be perfect yeah. for a permanent dog park. Yeah. And so I think that would be a great one to bring together. Probably a sit down meeting with utilities and we can kind of hash this out. Yes, please. Okay. So, then, so what do you want to set as a timeline? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, timeline. Um, well, let's talk, time check in. Time, let's talk about that later, but the Sterling Canal, let's talk about timeline. That's what I mean. I was going to lump them in if it makes sense. sense. Okay. The same meeting, yeah. Same meeting. Okay. And how about in um, two months I return to the ad hoc? Is that reasonable? Okay. And, and you can tell us if you want, if you feel like you want to return if to us or bring it to the whole commission. Okay. Two months from now, so that is on. Yeah. 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 <coughs> so June 2015. We will get the information mm -hmm. related to the application. Yeah, I think that's the agenda. 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 I think that
Okay, Lucy Evans. Okay, so just sit, sit if you want to talk about that one. Um, same status, we need to write up what we have so far and report back to the commission. I don't think there's a lot of... Do you have to gather more information or is it just a matter of assembling what we already have? I'm wondering. We haven't, you know, we haven't done any community, we just did our meeting with John Aiken. Yeah, we learned a lot on the CIP status. Yeah, but uh, we, we, did, we, we already recorded those three CIPs. Yeah, so I'm wondering what else is, are there any next steps on that? Um, I think the next step was on the third CIP that has to do with exhibits. There's only been like 56,000 or something yeah. allocated it, and that's not enough money. So that is something that John Aiken very much wants to work on to figure out how to do it properly, how to get more money. And he wanted to take sort of a meta look at the park system out there. He wanted to look at the exhibits, not just for Lucy Evans and Terminal <coughs> Center, but to think about exhibits in big speed but he, he wanted to think about the whole area. That, that's what he told. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense too. In fact, if we were really to do it in sequence in the right way, we would line up the Baylands Comprehensive Conservation Plan, which is now possible. It's in the CIP plan to be funded. Mm -hmm. for, for, um, the advocates for that, and it's, it's in there, so hopefully it will happen. But that would inform exhibits and signage and all sorts of things. Does it inform that when you're talking about conservation plan? It would, I would think. Okay. Would think. <coughs> so we, that's we should... That's for 2018. Yeah, so it's, it's out of sequence. <laughs> so we, we, I think we have to do Chris. some exhibit work <coughs> because they're really, at this point, <coughs> pretty all in our day. So they're almost unreadable. That's the problem yeah. at the point where you yeah. either just remove them, maybe just remove them and leave no exhibits while we're waiting. I really think it'd be good to have someone that looks at foothills. Yes, we talked about yeah, that. Russell yeah, Russell right? and Baylands all at once because you'd be duplicating. If you just look at one, a lot of the big picture stuff and mm -hmm. organization would be repeated by other people. I don't agree with that though. I think once you lob them all together, we'll get the discernment won't happen. It's too big. Do we, they're totally different. Why do we need them all lumped together? Well, who's going to make the exhibit? Who's going to uh, maintain the exhibits? All that kind of process is, is similar. Finding volunteers and the same. finding sure stakeholders that want to help us. Mm -hmm. although, although it could no, be separated. We mean signage? When we talk about exhibits, we mean educational materials that are posted. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm particularly thinking of those three cases inside of the three interpretive centers. Okay, well, let's take a step back. So what, John, you can look at exhibits as just associated physically with interpretive centers. <coughs> and we have those at each of those interpretive centers. But what John Aiken was saying for the Baylands, because we're developing the park trail system at Bixby Park, and it, you know, it's a big sprawled out area, he wanted to look at that whole system beyond the interpretive center at Bixby Park, mm -hmm. which I think is a, a separate entity to, to look at that. That's unrelated to Foothill and Rastadero. Is my my sense is that it would fall under its own CIP. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to keep it separate for now. I think it might end up in in two places, as um, Chairman is recommending. It is part of a larger picture, but we have the CIPs that are in progress there right now, including the boardwalk, um, and so there is. At least the, the CIP title. Mm -hmm. I can look, pull up the CIP. It says uh, Baylands Nature Interpretive Center Exhibits Improvement. And, and that's what he, we're considering a change on that, so it'd be broader, because there's not a, that even in of itself might not be enough money that's there, sitting there right now, not CIP, for the stated action. Okay. So what is the role you envision for this commission related to that? Well, okay. our role, if we're going to take the broad look, the people who are on the big speed ad hoc, I think, would have something, just um, feedback to give on where, where we think it would be really useful to have signage. Do so you think we need an ad hoc for that, or is that something that the, whatever John Aiken comes up with should be presented <coughs> to the full commission and we just... That's possible. That I'm open-minded if that's the direction we want to go. It's I don't care, just someone have, like either the whole commission yeah. or an ad hoc, but I think we should drop the ball on it because it's the, the momentum is there right now to keep things at big speed. Right. And, there, and there's also a lot of momentum for the interpretive center. And we've been in pretty clear direction from the council that to do some work out there, get, get the uh, boardwalk figured mm -hmm. out, whether we can repair it or not, right. and clean it up and get some, you know, get some of those exhibits you know, improved. So 
we do want to take action there. So if we add additional scope, that's the concern is that it starts to take longer or, um, well, I get, I get why we would do that because there's a connectivity, right? Well, well how, about, how about, where do we, sorry to interrupt, but where do we stand on exhibits right now for Bixby Park? Is there, is there a separate CIP? I have to no, there is not. Yeah. Because John was saying, I'm going to have to, John Aiken was saying, I have to go back and work on the CIP. 56,000 is not going to be enough. Or is that, is that already approved? Is the money already allocated to him? 56,000. So maybe what he was saying is that's not, I'm going to need to do more than what this money is going to buy. So I'm, uh, he wants another CIP that he's going to work on that's going to address the uh, the non the areas that are not covered by the 56,000. So can I turn you to the question? Yeah. Right, and I think we can spend okay, just Robert, Robert real, real quick before you do, um, when we met with John Aiken, his focus was very clearly Junior Museum and Zoo. Yes. Is there anybody else on staff that could be our designated person that would have time and energy to focus on the end of the Not really, unfortunately. We used to have staff that would, uh, that would, that would be their home. I think our, our hands are going to be kind of tied as an ad hoc if we don't have somebody on staff who's able to work on it. It's seems like a very small percentage of his time is available. Yes. Yes, that is and yet we have a strong interest in this. Let's, let's go back to Eric. Yeah. Right. Sorry. It's sort of another end of the same thing, which is, because you know, we get questions on this, right? When does the Parks and Recreation Commission anticipate or target that the Interpretive Center and the Boardwalk might be open again? That should be our first priority. I agree with that. And it's tied to these CIPs. I found it pretty complicated how they were all staged over these multi years. Yeah, it's, some it's not really a Parks and Rec Commission question as much as it is a staff question. That, because there isn't really sort of a policy issue. The policy is being decided, get it done, <laughs> and do it as quickly as you can. And so the, this, you're going to have to help me get sure. The study is the first thing for the board for. Because you know it's, it's in such disrepair that they're we need to know what what's possible there in the environmental implications. And in for the timing for that, we're going out to we're interviewing the consultants right now, so that's going to start very very soon. We anticipate uh, turnaround time. I would hope in six months we'd have the recommendation completed and have all the information we need to know, and that would inform the next step for the boardwalk. Do we go for short-term fixes that it recommends, medium-term or, or long-term full replacement? And was the day uh, These are rough guesses, but we're starting soon. I would anticipate in, in three weeks we have a consultant selected, put them under contract to get going, and then I would imagine within you know six months we'd have something back completed and ready. And, and we need to say that is for a feasibility study. That is for the that feasibility. That CIP is a feasibility mm -hmm. study on the boardwalk. So mm -hmm. once they complete the feasibility study, you think it might be completed in six months? That's my guess. And then, then we have to go and... We would request a new CIP based on whatever that was to go into the... I mean, I would say put it in as soon as possible so we go into the very next CIP budget. Unless it was a short-term fix and we had uh, existing CIP funds in the park emergency, <coughs> let's say it was under 50000 and we could, I, mean, I doubt it will, but if it were, we could activate, uh, you know, get that going with some of our existing funds. So we're talking in September before we know what is going to be needed, and then you put out the work order, then we're talking it's probably not going to be completed till the beginning of 2016, is sort of what things Depends what, what they come back with, but yes. And there's only certain periods of time you can walk in the marsh line, so they're very restricted. Mm -hmm. um, Reading plus the permitting process. Right, and so that's the that So that one seems to be on, that one's, <laughs> that one's on a fast track. Yes. <laughs> That one seems to be on the fastest track, although doing the feasibility slows it all down, of course, because you have to do it in two steps. The second CIP is on doing the um, doing some remodeling of the interior space, and it was written somewhat restrictively. Commissioner Ashland and I asked, can you kind of fold in thinking about programming in that building and get a design eye 
So John Aiken thought he could do all of that under that CIP, and does that one start next year? So no, it'll be starting soon. It starts as well. Our yeah. Coming up. Yeah. And that as well. Yeah. Although I think the public is really interested in that boardwalk, but this yeah. other one's going to flow in there, and because it doesn't require feasibility <coughs> study, that might be completed first. That's right. That's that's how it gets ahead. It doesn't require feasibility. Mm -hmm. Then there's this third one on the exhibits, and the exhibits out there are just in horrible shape. You can't read them. You, they're just all worn away. away. Exterior ones. Right? Exterior exhibits are in really poor shape, and they're just kind of a bit of an embarrassment the way they look, quite frankly, and so. You're talking at the outside center, yes. at the center or all of the events? No, they're, they're just, just the center. Just, four just, them, just so the center. The right lane. So we were discussing this and we didn't really get a good answer on that. Do you agree? Right. Stacey? The question was, you know, do we have any authority to say, you know, we need more funding for that third portion of the CIP to do what what John Aiken recommended and what we agree with. The funding wasn't allocated so how do we get in that next cycle to request the funding to do that yeah I, my recommendation I've talked to John a little bit about this we have 56,000 that's good I think we ought to get a designer on board and actually get them on board at the same time we're thinking about the, some of this interior work so they can talk to one another yes, yes. I do. And, um, and and maybe we ask the designer to think you know in terms of a few different concepts a concept of what can be done with fifty-six thousand dollars? What can we have done if we do a little more and think beyond the interpretive center um, and start sharing some of those things? And then that could then lead to adding to or adding another CAP or adding to that CAP next chance we get. But it also allows us at least to do some things right there in the Turkmen Center right away. Do you think it'd be useful to have John come in and talk to the council, or maybe some other staff come in and talk to the not council, talk to the commission? Yeah, when we go in the next couple months. Yeah. It just or do you want to, do you think you ad hoc would be better, more well, productive? We did ask We did, yeah, yeah, he agreed to do that. Um, and I think it would be useful, but it's somewhere in the next six months time frame, he'll know more. So I think that would be, we don't have to. What, what is he waiting for? Just for some of the progress to be made on hiring these consultants to do start the feasibility study to hire to the designer. But if we were to put him on our agenda to come back and talk to us in about six <coughs> months time, it sounds like he would have something tangible to say and show us, and tell us about at that time. Whereas if we put them on sooner, I don't well, think I'll have anything else to say. My concern sooner. is that CIP for 2017 starts September. And if he comes in September, we may miss the, miss the train. Oh, okay. That would be a good time. September. Because that's probably that the first time we're thinking about what we would want to add to the new five-year plan. And then this could be part of that conversation. So, if we Maybe start, when was our first meeting this year at? Do you remember? Was that was in the summer? July, July I was going to say. Yeah. Do we want to come back in August so we're ready for the CFP meeting? We're ready in August. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Put that out there earlier, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think any time to July, August, uh, whenever, whenever we have good information for a substantive discussion, we ought to. Right, and we don't know. I don't know how if our commission wants to weigh in on design out in the Baylands Open Space Preserve. Just, well, I have a quick question. This? With regard to the feasibility study and any work or uh, financial investment the city is going to be doing out there, are we taking into consideration the sea level rise? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because okay. it kind of seems foolish to put money against right, something that's going to be underwater. Right, that's like all. Eight years from now. Yeah, that's being considered. So the way it typically works is we have someone look at some design and they bring us ideas and then we respond. So I guess we should keep in with that cycle. Cycle. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just that. If you still have the ad hoc committee that's still meeting, then there could be additional meetings with the ad hoc committee in advance of coming to the commission. Mm -hmm. I okay. think we'll be able to do that. Okay. So we'll, keep, we'll keep that alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you're putting for the commission somewhere between July and September? Yes. Okay. And add up with, <coughs> with the staff to, to get something ready for that. Okay. okay. The, nec the, next two are mas the next three are master plan. Let's skip over those because those are obviously ongoing. And if we have time, if, we if there's anything we can talk about, we can talk about at the end. So uh, in fact, I do have to get going. Okay. Yeah, but there are, so I was just looking through the list. Is there any here that... Oh, uh, there's one I really want to talk about. Okay. And that is the rental spaces. Yes. And the one time we were talking about, would we hire someone that would be doing that? There was some, um, 
Lucy Stern was going to have some sort of manager perhaps hired that would be looking at this as part of their job as opposed to just a separate project? So we, we have three managers, one of each community, and Carberly Mitchell and Lucy Stern. Uh -huh. And there are sort of a cohort of three managers within the recreation division. And we look to, to them and we can do some analysis here. But related to that is the cost of services study which I wanted to let you know that there is a plan for that to go to council for a study session coming up on April 6th. So that's a couple weeks away now. And it's, it's not coming from our department, it's coming from Office of Management and Budget. And they talk a little bit about rental spaces in that report because it came up with a policy and services meeting or a finance meeting, I can't remember which. Um, and it's, it's very much related to this cost of services study. There's discussion about rentals and utilization of space um, and what, what should we be doing maximizing revenue versus maximizing access, you know, which is not necessarily, necessarily revenue-based uh, from the community. So in that staff report, it does briefly, but it talks about uh, rental, um, this issue. So, so my point here is I think the cost of services study is the um, most important next um, next thing that will happen that the commission might be interested in. One, reading the report during that, and <coughs> maybe even attending the study session or assigning a commission or two to attend. And then, depending on the council discussion and the direction, we can agendize it thereafter if the commission thinks that it's going to do that. When we start the CAP process, one thing that's unique about this is that if we spend money, we make it back. Yes. So, which means that that may, since we have this five-year plan, you have to have a good reason to cut in line, and this might be a good reason. Mm -hmm. that any, if we spend X thousand dollars, we get more of that back from, from re, uh, either increased rents or decreased vacancies. Yeah. Case in point is covering the community center where we had a lot of time. It used to be a library. We're very eager to get that renovated so that it can generate income again. It generates eighty thousand or so a year. It did before. It was, it was a little nicer with a little more technology and other things that could, that could generate over a hundred thousand dollars a year just that one room and so that's high on the list uh, and when is that supposed to be renovated what's the scale on that and it's a public works project i asked the same question uh, i don't have an answer um, my daughter's um, youth symphony rented that every year for the ice cream social yeah. so i really miss that we'd probably go back to that yeah it's a really large space it had the kitchen behind mm -hmm. it as part of it too. There's no, you know, old kitchen for a high school, so we, we want to renovate the kitchen again, not as big as it was, because we never really used that huge space. But, a, you know, a proper catering kitchen is something more similar to what we have here at Mitchell. And what's unique about that space that we haven't found since is you can eat in it, like when you're doing a performance. We, the city allowed people to eat in there at least. Yeah. Because where we are now at the JCC Auditorium, we can't do the performance and eat. Yeah. So it's, it was a nice space. Do you know in the libraries now you can take food and drink at any time if you want? Upstairs, downstairs, just so you know. I didn't know that when I heard that. Wow. Do you know you get kicked out of the tea room if you don't have tea with you? <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Yeah. Yeah, so we're done with the rental spaces. Before you yeah, exactly. move off of cost of services study, I yeah. just have a quick question on that. That went to council, and we looked at it also, oh, I think over a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. And councils gave direction that kicked off a values discussion to sort of reframe the issues and how the cost service study was presented. Is that what this study session is about, is coming back with a new version or a new approach? It's pretty much the same approach that we talked about uh, as a commission when Lon Do came from, from our department. Um, they're recommending uh, the three tiers of cost recovery. And this, it's a study session, so there's no action. Um, so it's essentially it's the same thing. I haven't recall seeing anything in there that was specific to an outreach plan okay. in the staff report from OMB. Right. Interestingly. Yeah. As soon as it's um, public, I'll send the link. You right. see it now, and there, these reports are uh, going out two weeks, almost two weeks, ten days in advance. And we want to to see Thanks. I think that would be very informative to the master planning process as well, so I think that we should try to yeah. time together in a way we think about what we want to do in the future. And as I recall, the staff report does talk about the cost recovery policy for fee-based classes within community services. 
that, that is a policy that already exists, mm -hmm. um, that um, the recommendation is to, to review that with the public and probably the commission, that particular policy. Should we, should, is there anyone who can volunteer to go to that? I'm out of town with that particular six, six o'clock, I think, it's for like six okay. <coughs> Uh, it does sound really important to you. Is that videotaped, those study sessions? Or yes, it is. Yes. So, is there any other questions that anyone had for me before I leave about any of these topics or anything else? It was one I was going to add, and I didn't know. Um, we had a meeting with the, uh, the high school regarding the most recent suicide, and one of the things that came up was the need for high school students to have a physical outlet. Currently, when you're in high school, the only thing you have after your two years of PE is to join a sports team. And those teams, you can go to practice five days a week, and if you're not a good player, you don't get play time. And it's pretty demoralizing. Mm. And I asked for a show of hands, and over 70% of the parents in that room raised their hands, and they said they would love to have some sort of pick up, play for fun field space anywhere. And I, it would take a little bit of uh, negotiation with the high school coaches, but I think we can make it happen, and I, I would like to take the lead on that if you think it's worthwhile. Yeah, and think and it's going through the school city liaison group. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would be very supportive of it. I'd love to see the school district really leaning on that too, though, and provide some mm -hmm. more recreational type offerings on campus. Because it's just a competitive. For both high schools, it's not right. Yeah. Okay. So they, they have the facilities. Yeah. You know, we don't have any gyms. I know, <laughs> but they do. We're finding a way to meet uh, the majority of needs because the needs are insatiable in some ways. Well, we discussed so, that before because some people want to practice eight days a week. Yeah, that is the so we're not getting into that, but we've defined it as you know whatever it is, two, three time slots, whatever it is in the policy, right. and that you know, that policy is meeting the need. Right. Even without it, even without it, which is. Not being great. Finally. So, so along those lines, when we did the Philadelphia's policy, we said we'd review it in a couple of years. I've lost track of time. Is it is it time to just re uh, reconstitute ad hoc for a review, or do you think we can let that go for another year? You know, I think as part of the parks master plan, where field use is going to be one of the topics you know, that we'll look at. Is is that's a good time? Which will be this year? Okay. Hope we're hearing as it shake up next to the policy that we have. So we can dissolve that ad hoc. I, we, it, we didn't even, yeah. it shouldn't even be on, we didn't even do it last year. It's easy mm -hmm. enough to set back up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bixby Hill Design. I think that's actually you on that one, not me. Yeah, Keith. Okay, and that actually is coming to, we're coming back next month? Yeah. Yes. Next week or April? No, uh, April. If the agenda is not packed with master plan, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the things. So, whatever the commission wants. Mm -hmm. Seven point seven acres. She's on one for now. Yeah, I'm not back up. FYI, <coughs> she's so slash. She's oh. both. <laughs> I'm back up actually on the master plan committee meetings. So that's on hold until the hydrologist is complete. Well, we have to get. The well, next steps is uh, oh, staff to get the CSP. Yeah, yeah. 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 we need the money for it first. It's only about 75. Okay. The park communications plan. What does that mean? I'm not sure what that one is. That was the CSD. Oh, the oh the park communication. That was um the email list and. Oh yes. I think we got that one. Yeah. We had a couple meetings about it, and you worked on it. I did. Darren worked on it. We brought that in, we've got one that's working, we're mm -hmm. it. Right. 
That's in the distribution list. Declare victory. Okay. Scott Park, that's complete. There's no same issue on that, right? Only update is that I'm meeting with the contractor to get that going on Monday. So, yeah. good news. And that's going to be completely roughly when? Um, I, I bet we would start 10 days after I meet them on Monday, but I'm anticipating somewhere around two and a half months to get that wrapped up, maybe three. Is Approximately. Is it July? July, okay. Does that include the, um, uh -huh. uh, the redo of the asphalt walkway between the rehabilitation center and the park because it's so torn up with roots right now? They can't get their wheelchairs and walkers over to the park where they like to sit. They have to go back out to the sidewalk in the end. I'm not sure it does include that, but you know what? It's one of those things. It's like a cut through. It's a cut through, and it's asphalt. Across that pine tree area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think it needed it, but I'm going to add that to the, their the list of work they do out there. Well, I don't know about that one. I'm on track to that. My contract's already <laughs> burned, uh, but I've got another CIP with fresh money coming in July 1st where I can do asphalt. So we can knock it out almost concurrent. Yeah, it's a fairly small area. I just didn't want it to get forgotten. Yeah, you're talking about the one that runs the length of the park, right? Between the cul-de-sac and the... Um, it's not the whole length of the park. It's actually it just cuts it's through about the six feet wide. Tree, right? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sure the, the, the big one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. That is the easy one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's tough for the uh, greenhouse people to yeah, that's get over there. Although it might be outside park property. I've got to double check. I think that I'm sure that yeah, it is. I don't think that's ours, but I'll, I'll double check. And, and transportation, I know that the Bocce Ball mm -hmm. folks were talking to the transportation department about uh, crosswalk upgrades for that connection. Is that included in the project? It is. I think they did tell us that. They might have gotten it. Oh, with the light and everything. Oh, yeah. And those are part yeah. of our contract. It's, 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 it's done. done. Yeah. 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 With the little yeah. flashing or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's very good. Mm. I thought that would never get done. That includes mm -hmm. the purchase of the Bocce Balls. Right. <laughs> yeah, so we even get a bunch of this. Because I don't want to wear a bunch of them ever again. <laughs> That's where we're putting the meerkat habitat. <laughs> okay, and let's, while we're on it, on parks here, on Monroe Park, we've passed the PIO, right? Where is and that? That's not on there. there. I know, I'm wondering what's on the list. But Peter and I are still working on that one. We're going to get that one um, started. Did they pass the PIO? Um, Soon. I thought so. It came yeah. back. It did come back. I know I'm, my neighborhood does, that's my neighborhood, and they ask, people ask me all yeah. the time, and it's turned into a dog park. Every, hmm. It's bizarre. It's full of dogs now every evening, and I'm hearing all kinds of comments about that. I'm 99% sure. It, we, we ran into a little struggle with some finalizing of exactly it's where the. Um, I think we didn't because we ran into some struggles on finalizing the surfacing, the play surfacing. It was uh, a requirement of accessibility and ran into conflict with some of the desires of the residents. So we're, we're very, very hard work. I think so. But we can dodge yeah, it. Yeah, out, basically. Can we make sure there's signage in that so it says you're not allowed to run your dog, dog off leash it's, it's park? Every evening it is a dog haven uh -huh. now. And I've lived near, across the street from that park for 13 years and it's never been like that. And I'm hearing that the smell is horrible. I haven't gone over there. To dogs are off, off leash, right? Yeah. yeah, it's full of off leash dogs. It's a, there's a big group of kids. Yeah, just yeah. send an officer at 7 o'clock at night. So when did you guys think I missed out? Uh, I'll get back to you guys. Uh, we need to do a little reconnoitering. The challenge when we get to the management and efficiency of managing projects through the Park Rent Commission will be one that comes up is, this is one area where we exceed the staff's capability to manage all the projects at once. Scott Hopkins, Monroe, El Camino Park, all kind of up in the air. Something ends up giving and this one gave. And we need to get it back on the, the yeah. plate ASAP. Um, and we will do so. Thank you. Once the master plan is done, I think we need to have a discussion about do we need to hire another plan or at least like a consultant for a couple of years because we have the Blue Room Commission catch up and we're not catching up anymore. <coughs> so that'll be good. Once the master plan is done, we'll have nothing to hold us back and address that. Uh, Bowen Park. You, you've gone off topic here. You sure have. Can you stick back to this one? Well, we well, about? Who made this list anyway, Chair? <laughs> well, he's just doing all the parts. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not on our list. But they're not on our list, so it's okay. confusing to us. Both we do the list and then you can... As the 90% package came back from the consult test to review, so it should go out to pay probably next month and start sometime in the next few months doing the renovation there. So I would say by the end of the summer, it will be that project be complete. 
But that's not coming back to us. We're, no. we're done with that. Yeah, you're done with that. Okay. Okay, back to the list. Magical Bridge. Mm -hmm. That is complete. Okay. Is there any action? Magical Bridge is opening April 18th. Uh, the ceremony starts at 10 a.m. The actual ceremony itself is from 10 to 11. Uh, and then there will be, it goes to five, so there will be things within the playground all day long. Uh, they're going to have inter or, uh, entertainment on the stage, so they have some children's choirs and a puppeteer and a musician. Every, like, I think half hour, someone, like, performs for, like, 15 minutes. So that's basically what's happening. Uh, I expect that the park to be completed by the end of next week. That's the schedule. It's going, so. so it shouldn't be open to anybody who's not construction crew right now, right? Right. Okay, there definitely were people in there playing with drones or something yesterday when I walked by. Well, during the day? Oh, yeah. Uh oh. It's afternoon. Between three and four. Could have been the ones that come. Oh, between three and four? Yeah. Oh. Just so happened to be there. Large, cool, remote control thingy. Oh. <laughs> Didn't look like she was working, but she was going to Oh, working. she. that might be the uh, friend's uh, aerial photographer. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. She okay. brings a drone out every yeah. once in a while and shoots the progress of the okay. drone. That they keep updating on their Facebook page so you can see a time lapse. Okay, of yeah, because it was pretty <laughs> substantial. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool, thanks. It was official. <laughs> okay. Hopkins Park. Hopkins Park uh, is complete. Project's done. We're done. You might see there's still a little fencing protecting the seed. We seeded the turf rather than we sod, so it's growing in. The fence is only to allow the seed to fully establish, and then that comes down. The rest of the park is open. Okay. The next uh, for ad hocs to develop work plans and timelines. Um, oh. I think that was an appeal for efficiency. Yeah. From the ad hocs last year. That. Do you that, were that ad hocs were just kind of sitting and not doing anything? Right. That's a pretty good way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> and there should be not only some specifics that are developed, very specific, but that it should come back to the commission regularly as opposed to just kind of hanging out there. So, okay. so in that case, I would agree with the word ongoing to the ad hoc. Because we still need to do that. Okay. CIPs we already talked about. Field use. We're going to talk about it again as part of the master plan. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't have, we don't have an ad hoc on that. Oh, these aren't ad hocs. They're right. These are just items. Yeah. The MIG will be meeting with field users on Tuesday, next Tuesday morning, to have a conversation with them as well. Is that ahead of a, oh, a particular brokering period coming up, or just? No, it's just to get feedback from them, basically, about the status of the fields and their input into if we need more, things of that nature. That's good to know. Occasionally, we, I do get people from the community saying, I'm unhappy with the fields. I never know what who to send them to. Who's, if there's a... Is that, is, is it, no, we got, I got told by Rob, it's actually you, Darren, is if you're not busy enough. I, I do, my way. they really have to go your way. They can go to Adam and then we, we confer <laughs> because he's doing the brokering and the brokering goes hand in hand with the maintenance, right? Too much brokering leads to poor maintenance. Okay, so you're the contract yeah. person. Either way is great. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, glad to, glad to address the issues. The feed, feeding wildlife, is that in, totally done? Is it's totally done. Okay. in place and working well, improving the situation. So, several other agencies have contacted me recently to say, hey, I really liked uh, what you guys did, how's it going, what do you recommend in our situation? So we kind of, not that we're either, we aren't. This has been in place for a very long time for lots of agencies, but for those that have been in the same situation as us, they're excited that we're taking a step. Okay. I'm just going to make a comment on this. <clears throat> it's complete, but when we do something that doesn't create an ordinance, it's a new law. Um, seems like at some point in time out there we should have a let's check in and see what's happening and get feedback and see if there's compliance. Um, so that doesn't have to be something for us, but it'd be great if you could give us compliance 18 months out and see mm -hmm. what's happening. What's happening? And then the underlying issue here, using this as a more global exam example for Eric, is just um, generally there's not enforcement on this. 
almost by intent because there aren't enough of these people to go and you know check if people are feeding ducks. But that news kind of gets around. So I'm not sure when we're making ordinances that we're not going to enforce what's going to happen. So just as a sort of general question <coughs> to be thinking about for ordinances of public work council. Yeah. This is one that we are enforcing. Um, we talk to people every day about it. And this is just a tool that helps get those non-compliant folks that say, I don't care, I make it a law. Well, yeah. it is a law now. We see you next time you get a ticket. Well, yeah. It's been infected. Have you ticketed any? No one's needed to be ticketed. So there's no more bacon and donuts? Uh, only when the rangers aren't there. It does still happen. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying it's cured the problem, but it's much better than it was. Okay, 7.7 .7 acres we talked about already. Arasadero Preserve. Yeah, that's something that I brought up <coughs> last year that there just doesn't seem to be enough parking ever there. What there is, it's jammed and they're parking down the road. And the issue there was um, it's designated low impact reserve, so we have to get almost a legal evaluation first as to what's available. I think in the short term, you're going to try to squeeze in some markers or something. Mm -hmm. And then in the longer term, maybe it's part of the master plan or not. So that, that's what was left, isn't it? I'm just looking for some clarification on that because during the week when I go, I always find parking, and during the weekend, it's the big cycling groups who come in there and congregate. And so I'm not sure we should do anything with the big cycling groups that are coming from all communities. So yeah. I have found is when they come and park there, then people who want to use the park can't park. Right, so... Well, you you so can put a limit, say... If you ride a bike, yeah. you'll park here. <laughs> no, the limit is in two-hour limit or whatever. That would be interesting. If you put a two-hour limit, then they would probably find another place. That, which That's a tough one. Because there's a great place also down the road where that car commuter yeah. parking lot is at Page Mill. Which, which is always which is a, overflowing. Well, it's always empty on the weekend. It's not that uh, during the weekend. The week, so I'd like some, can you do a little bit of back checking on trying to understand the parking situation there? During, and during the week, it's under your observations, is it a problem during the week? I haven't, have you observed that? I've observed it, I mean, not as bad as the weekends, and sometimes there's a couple spaces, but I'm actually stunned. Sometimes when I'm up there, it's that crowded. Amazing, so. You could look at maybe a two hour parking limit on weekends in the Arrested River lot, not during the week, because it doesn't seem that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That, that might be said, you sense that bike riders are out are parked there for a longer period of time yes. than park users? Yes, because like they today. come, they <laughs> congregate, they all bring their cars, they, they go park, they come and they go on an all day bike ride. ride. Yeah. Stop yes. for lunch, for yeah. beers. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. My husband oh, does, that's why I know. <laughs> Your husband's one of the violators? No, not the prosecutor. His group meets at Pete's Coffee or the Alpine Inn. They need a place where you tank up on coffee before you go, so they don't need it in Rostadero. But I know those the massive yeah. groups. But, but I guess the question would be, does that alleviate the problem? Or are you just freeing up new spaces every two hours for a higher percentage of bikers to come in and take those spots too? I mean, if the issue is you have non-park users using the lot, um, I don't know that necessarily solves your issue. I think we have to study well, a little bit. It'd yeah, I don't think we're trying to solve it here. The question mm -hmm. is, do we want an ad hoc, or do, you, do, do we have any feedback on the legal aspects? Or? Uh, my, my assessment of what we'd have to do if you wanted to change the status to add more parking is you'd have to go to the council and get them to change the, uh, we'd have to do a staff report, go to council and request them to change that low impact status to increase the capacity of that parking lot. Would that, that, that is not without significant impacts to the land and costs as well. But right now there's a, a lot. There's an no overflow parking lot. That that's not used. It is used for special events and volunteer programs. They're at Terra. They have their little base of operation right out of that area. So could it gets used, that? but it's periodic. Could and we open and that up on the weekends? Bro. Just universally? Regardless yeah. Of program? yeah. The, the cost of that is then you have no place for your designated volunteer programs to park. If it was just universally open to the weekends, it'll get filled. It's could we open it on days where we don't expect volunteer programs to come? Um, we'll give the volunteers a the sticker they can put on their... On their One of my... Uh, Again, we're not trying to make this a big ad, ad hoc on this. Just it becomes a man... These are management questions, really, then. Mm -hmm. So in what, if we don't want to expand it, maybe can it be managed? To and I also think we need more fact-gathering on this. So should we make this ongoing and... Since my name's on there, I stay with it. 
Yeah. You can do a sign saying if you're part of the bike group, please don't park here. This is for the preserve. Yeah. People who are enjoying the preserve. The sign, something simple. Low maintenance. Well, I think Doesn't people are going to park there regardless unless there's a time limit. I think that would keep them away. You have an EDA redress come in every two hours and swipe the tires with chalk. And if you did, if you enforced it for a couple months, then you probably wouldn't have to enforce it after that. <coughs> I don't think I have. Yeah, so it seems like we're continuing this every two hours to come in. Yeah. Well, well, the ad hoc didn't do any work though. Yeah. Yeah. This ad hoc. Yeah. This is an example of an ad hoc that hasn't done it. Have friends of the party yeah. because we're waiting for the ticket. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's not that. Yeah. No, we don't have a ticket. We can have them. Do you want to make it an ad hoc? Do that chalk thing. We have a gross violator who can then get a ranger to come down for things like that. And every, the every two hour thing on the weekend, when it's not feasible. But we have to study that problem more because I've only seen that anecdotally. I don't know. The ad hoc is going to do it. So <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. Is it an ad hoc of one or is an ad hoc to be more than one? It does not need to be more than one. It's going to drive a Winnebago up there. Take up 10 spaces. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going to spend all day yeah. watching you park your it. chair. Let's see if it's enforced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can invite you to an open space staff meeting and you can sit with the rangers and talk it all through, throughout all the different options. How about that? Right. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't need to be so I'm just saying I want to do it. That's great. The other thing I would like to have is at least some benches and or picnic tables up there. You don't have to. That comes under the same question. Right. Yeah. That's under the ordinance that you can't have those things. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Be. Low impact, yeah. So it brings you back to that, that measure if that's yeah. what she has one of I mean, that's one of the reasons with, we had kids. When the kids were young, we didn't go up there because they wanted us in spot to sit and eat their snacks. And sit. I think, we, I think there are a lot of ramifications <laughs> if, if you, and I don't know what they are, if you eliminate that low impact preserve designation, then it opens up the park to a lot of other stuff that we may not want to open up mm -hmm. the park to. So well, I think that's it. The, the, the low impact, is that, like does it specifically say no benches or does it say low impact? I'll investigate that. Okay. Because if it's, if it's the management's or the staff's interpretation of low impact, then they have some new way to put a couple benches here and there and not open it up to Frisbee and other right. stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is that the designation of, of uh, Bayland's open space preserve? So th is this our only designated low impact uh, preserve? Okay. The specific guidance was don't duplicate surrounding areas, keep this as a low impact. The small parking is more known than the lack of benches and other amenities like picnic tables that would turn more into the urbanized areas for this park. Oh, okay. uh, I think in the research I did a year and a half ago on this, I've got notes from uh, council meetings from when this was first decided. And they, they mentioned picnic benches and picnic tables and park benches there. Um, so I'd anyway, so be glad to share that with uh, Mr. Lowing and we can eventually leave you I'm also in a conversation with Enid Pierce and herself, and she'd like to see some benches up there, too. Here's the That's how we carry a little bit of weight. As people get older, they do need to stop and rest. So they're that's walking. Good. It's absolutely necessary. Okay. Okay. Uh, crosswalk at Kellogg and Middlefield. Did we do anything on that? Yeah. No. Rob, I think Rob was supposed to consult with planning and transport to see if that could get on their list. Is it okay? Is that something that would be it's probably part of the overall June, 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 I mean Junior Museum? Zoom Museum? <laughs> Junior, yeah. Junior Museum? Yeah. Museum? I'm sure. Uh, what is yes. yes. Now we bring this up too because uh, the traffic uh, or uh, the traffic consultant that's doing the environmental work is starting to do this stuff right now. It keeps sending me questions about parking and stuff over there, so. We should have him study that and make a recommendation on what should happen at that intersection yeah, with no, the new no design of the one access driveway. Access yeah. Actually, it seems crazy that there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's <laughs> such a, that road is so congested. Can we put you on that as a staff instead of oh. I couldn't yes. even imagine that crosswalk there. And For decades, it's simple. Peter yeah. Jensen, instead of Robert Dose, for the staff person on there. It's only getting worse there, too. Yeah. yeah. When I go to Lucy Stern in the afternoon, this is only like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, you just you take a left there, you go through 3 or 4 cycles mm -hmm. just to get through Middlefield and uh, Barca Vera. It's really bad. Oh, do it. I go cut through the parking lot, go behind Rinconada, cut out to me when you're good. <laughs> when well, I walk from my house, I just play traffic. Uh, High speed. Right? I'll stand in the yeah, street and stop. Go, I need to cross. That's where my cat and my dog walk. 
You walk your dog in the street? Yeah, the space is right yeah, that's what nah. Satellite oh, parking. Oh, it's cold. It's uh, is that the one where Jennifer was supposed to count the buses? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure why it was on here. I think that was just something we talked about at the last retreat because council was considering the additional satellite parking shuttles in the Baylands near the near the athletic center and the golf course in the Baylands Park. And um, we just wanted to pay close attention to it as it moved forward because we thought they were there was potential for substantial impacts, exactly. environmental impacts. Is that satellite parking dead, or is that still? I think it's still moving along. Mm -hmm. I believe we directed staff to go investigate. Or you did, like that. yeah. Previous council. Yeah. I would also be. note that the council, the previous council, was split on whether to do that or not. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who voted to proceed with it aren't on the council anymore. Okay. There's other people on the council now. So. This item came up from Council Schmidt last year at, at the retreat to do monitoring, and then you volunteered to be the one to do the monitoring. <laughs> 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 so what was going on at Council? No. To what was going on at, at Baylands? <laughs> Because so you're in the parking lot up there, and she's in the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get the guys. Like they don't like cans. You can get cans with long strings and dark <laughs> walking you can do while you're counting cars all the afternoon. Right, because then he was a shuttle back and forth from Baylands, and he was concerned about that. So. <laughs> and super. Well, it can go from Baylands to Arostadero. It can. We can just shuttle people, and then up to Foothills. We can just make giant triangles and buses. Next slide. Are we gonna? I don't even know what I can put all of the across all the What is BAC? Baylands Athletic Center. Thank you. Okay, so as far as the crosswalk, are we leaving uh, allowing on that? You're, no. you're still monitoring that. What was the status? Yes, with Jensen. And the status is ongoing. Ongoing. Okay, thank you. Being studied. And rental spaces was ongoing as well. Mm -hmm. like we're gonna tie it together with cost of service. Okay, and, and, and Henry, you are on with the AC status at like working or you're not? I guess I am, but I wouldn't call it an ad hoc. I think it's just follow. -up. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is the, this is the follow-up page, not the ad hoc page. Okay, cool, thanks. And I would say this is on hold, satellite parking, unless council does something more. It's just monitoring the activity. Oh, monitoring. Oh, monitoring. Just being alert. Council monitoring the council activity. activity. Okay, not yeah, possible. I'm not counting cars down here. So traffic is very heavy. Yes. <coughs> okay. City class training for park. That was from, uh, there was some interest among some commissioners to tap into any kind of issue-specific training that is offered to city staff that commissioners might be able to participate in. Um, and Rob was the lead on that. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure where, where he stands. I know we've gotten a lot of, or I, I've at least seen a lot of email invitations to some of the nonprofit work that they're doing out of the um, human Services Department. Um, I don't know if there are specific if commissioners are interested in specific types of classes that would be helpful. I think Rob probably stalled out, unsure about what we would want and how to match it up. Okay. In general, the um, why I, I'm not understanding that why we would be interested in taking classes or? So things like, um, I appreciated the, the nonprofit and the fundraising stuff that's come along our way. And a lot of times when something is going to get funded, like Junior Museum, like the library, like Magical Bridge, it's private fundraising that augments what the city is able to do to fund the project. So I'm happy when those things come across. I don't know what else we're missing out on, but I like that category. I find that category particularly useful. If we don't have a staff person, is Rob? We don't have a replacement on our commission for Rob. He's still, he's now in Greg Bett's position and his old position, right? Right. So I don't know if there's anything we can do other than keep in touch with our staff person. And if there's specific class offerings that we want to hear about, we let our staff person know, right? I don't know I, I that there's a master list that the city. That would be 
directly related to our if, if there's any master list that this, if this is coordinated at a higher level of staff, somebody who's, you know, overseas training offerings, and we could get, check that box and get on that email list if we choose, that'd be great. But how do we know if that exists without Rob here, so? It does, it does exist. There is an email list because we get it all the time yeah. for training. So, I mean, you know, you can learn how to do the budgeting and purchasing our, and, and our fill out contracts <laughs> yeah. and there's all kind of that so our our human human resources. And are, are commissioners allowed to monitor that list and see if we attend things or is it, are those class offerings only for staff? I believe it's just internal. So, so it's not open. It's not the, it's not open staff. Maybe if there's something you know you're interested in, you can ask our staff to liaison just to let you know. Well, exactly. Like um, Project Safety Net puts out a lot of training related material and if you're interested in that niche, you follow that. So I don't think that's, I think, I don't think we have further to do on that. No. I think it's too vague unless we had categories of things that we were looking for training on. Okay. Next one is EIR. Well, yeah, I, I, I was the one who suggested that. And I actually did, a long time ago, I emailed Karen Coleman. She had, Karen Coleman had suggested that we might benefit as a commission if we had some rudimentary training on how EIRs work. Mm -hmm. This this came up around the golf course EIR, which, which did come under our purview because it had to do with expanding playing fields and all these different ideas. So actually, Karen Holman had suggested that maybe I look into getting some training for the commission. We followed up with her and she, I was interested if the city, I, I wanted to know if the city ran any training. It turned out they didn't. Right. And so Karen Holman had a contact of someone who runs like uh, little workshops on this, who would come in if we had a two hour meeting and would do a workshop for us. I don't know. Can I just have a show of hands if anyone on this country is interested in such a workshop? I think it's worth some sort of presentation, if not a two-hour workshop I would be interested in, or if it was even a presentation at one of our regular meetings, just an overview of what it is and isn't. I mean, I would be, I would welcome something rather than nothing. More like a 30-minute presentation? Up to two hours. Okay, yeah, because Okay, two hours is separate from our having a two-hour presentation at our meeting. I would do either. I would be interested either way. You know, I've been to one of these workshops. I went to it through another organization. I found it so useful. I think, I think actually everybody should have to do it. Okay, <laughs> I, on a commission first. Okay, then maybe we should. I'd be willing to follow up. So as far as I got was, how much time does your commission want to spend on this? And I really needed to know that before trying to schedule something. We could just invite someone from the planning staff to come in for do like a twenty-minute presentation on what the EIR is, what the sections are, what they're looking for inside of it, what the process is of how it goes out to the community and then how it gets But I don't think you can do that in 20 minutes. Having, I went to, my workshop I think was a four hour workshop. It doesn't have to be that long. Well, it's the, they're not gonna tell you how to fill it out, but they're basically gonna tell you the, the section and what, what the it all means. means. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really good to have some kind of introduction for when you're trying to read the literature. So did you say you had somebody who could offer it? Karen Holman gave me a name of someone and I dropped the ball. She basically, where it ended was, how much time does your commission want to spend on this? So it, it, really, so it comes down to how, how we want to organize it. And it, I'm hearing today that there is interest. So. What is the threshold for EIR? How often do we have to do EIRs? Not very often for most of our projects. Um, it does come up though. Like a golf course way to do one. Well. Yeah. But all these. one for the bridge. JPA. Okay. Uh, Doing one for the JMZ and the Lincoln Island Long Range Plan. So it basically yeah, looking at like five or six specific areas that they study noise pollution, if they find bones or something like on that, <laughs> uh, you know, studying the, the biology of birds is what it has to do a lot of impact or on our historic resources. Well, so also, all, you have to in an EIR, you have to present alternate plans, which I think is really informative for policy making. Mm -hmm. So there's some pieces of it that do relate to how we look at the project. <coughs> well, so I'd have to get, I was hoping someone in the city did this, because if we're doing it privately, then I have to get clearance to pay the person. I, I talked to our staff liaison. 
We have people who, in the city, are planning that work on the IRS, but I don't know that you would say they're an instructor for it. Yeah, you'd want to get an instructor who can break it down, yeah. give you pertinent information efficiently. Right. This person that Karen Holman gave you, mm -hmm. external to the city? External to the city. Does the city have any training on the IRS? No. Because I, I was surprised by that. The, so in the planning department, people come in so knowledgeable, they have already taken their coursework on Yeah, 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 it's a pretty rapid job. And I do think it's a burden to ask a staff person to give a little workshop if they're not used to mm -hmm. teaching that material. I think it would be most efficient if we hired someone who had experience doing such a thing. Which, okay. what should I do? Where should I well, this? why don't you talk with Rob and see if he wants to organize a uh, city city staff uh, EIR training. And if they do that, then we can sit down. I okay. So it'd be open to, so beyond our commission? Or how about I, can't, I can't believe that we would be the only commission that would be interested in this. Right, but why are you saying it would be a city staff, a staff training open, rather than a Open to staff and commission. Okay. Oh, yeah. so then the, the city then pays for it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. <laughs> Yeah, clearly it should be beyond us. <coughs> but, okay, so is, do you think a good amount of time would be a two-hour work study session? Yeah, I don't think I would want to spend four hours on it. That'd be one two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll I think get, up on get some prices and some dates and maybe um, coordinating with Rob and scheduling with that. So well, it's nice to know there's interest. And if we open it up to other commissions, then we could, you know, find out how many we need to fill the room to make it worthwhile. Okay. Okay, gate, gate trigger, gate keeper training. What's that? QPR training. Oh, that's QPR? Was Q any of you are QPR trained? What is QPR? Question for persuade refer for someone who's thinking of suicide. So, oh, okay. the, it's a training on I am not. Speak with them and get them help. That is on here because as part of Project Safety Net, mm -hmm. Several years ago now, the commission entered into a memorandum of understanding and committed to getting all the commissioners QPR trained to be additional adults in the community. You're trained, I'm trained, Darren and Rob, I think there were four. Yeah. Peter, are you trained? I'm not sure. That probably doesn't come up in your job too often, though. <laughs> Do we get notices of training sessions? I haven't, I don't recall receiving There have been a couple notices of QPR training courses. Okay. Maybe not so recently. I wonder if there was just a push on it last year. Last year. Well, there was one very recently that came oh. out through Rika. I mean, I'm not sure where I saw it. It might have been through Project Safety Net, but there was a very recent one that came out. Okay, I, I don't recall seeing them. Are they coming past us as a commission as a whole, or is it on separate Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't remember. Don't remember. I might have gotten it just from the Project Safety Net okay. list. It, what is so the time frame of that training? It's like an hour and a half, oh, two hours. Okay. okay. You can also do it online. But it's better if you do it in person, because then you do the whole point aspect, yeah. which you can't get online. Have either of you used your training since having it? I have. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So I think that rather than being on Rob, I think that's really on every commissioner to to just sign up for it. To just sign up for it and do it. You can ask to make that out of awesome. She's a good, good person to start with. Okay, park website, we talked about that already. And agenda time slots. I assume this means trying to keep the meeting to the amount of time that we schedule. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's on here, but I do think it's something that we should discuss here. It's not really an issue of having to look at management and management meetings. Um, I think that one of the most challenging things for me as chair in my was figuring out well, how how long it does make for a particular topic and then moving the conversation along so that everybody had who had something they wanted to say had an opportunity to say it. I think there are a lot of different parts to that. One is the presenter, if you've got a half hour slot on your agenda and your presenter talks for half an hour, then you, you're instantly backed up, right? You have no time for discussion. So one of the things is to have the staff and the chair maybe work more closely with presenters who are on the agenda for a particular month 
to make sure they know how long they want them to speak or how long they or we know how long they need to speak so that we can then adjust the discussion time um, appropriately. Also, if we've got 30 minutes for an agenda item for the discussion part of it, that's less than five minutes a piece to speak. So if um, one of us goes over, then that eats into other people's time. And it's just important to have everybody be respectful that everyone may well have something to say. I heard several from several commissioners over the last year that they felt that um, as time backed up and we're as we would get behind on any particular item, they would forego making comments in the interest of moving on the schedule as opposed to saying what they had to say. So I think that's an unfortunate outcome. At the same time, there are a lot of times when people have a lot to say or there are a lot of issues and the chair doesn't know how much discussion is coming up and, and it's inevitable that you will periodically run over, but it, that should be the exception and not the rule. And so I would just encourage everyone to <coughs> I'm not chair anymore. And, and, and he has to <laughs> struggle with that now. I think it would be very helpful to him if commissioners would you know, come prepared with their comments and concerns prioritized so that we can welcome Keith to cut us off as he feels necessary to keep the schedule and then come back if time permits. But then you make sure you get your top priority issues covered before you get cut off. And and the other point I want to make is when we ask questions, sometimes the answer rambles on. Absolutely. And we, we spend 10 seconds asking questions and it's five minutes coming back. I think we have to be more aggressive cutting them off. If we've got our answer, let's move on and move to the next question. Sometimes they can eat up the time more than we do. I think another piece of this is uh, the agendas. Sometimes they're pretty uh, aggressive. <laughs> there's, there's no way you're looking at this going, this is not a three hour meeting. This is, this is four and a half or right. it, to be more realistic in setting what is going to be on that agenda, um, sometimes I see that we're, we're, we've discussed a month before, uh, you know, we're going to do this and this and this, and then you get the agenda and there's two or three more items that have been uh, snuck in there uh, after we had discussed it, and it just really front loads the meeting, so we don't have time for that discussion in peace. I think that's definitely true. Unfortunately, that's... And I and understand there's some that are time under control in many cases because yeah. we meet once a month, right? right? So if there's a time sensitive issue that yes. needs to come before us, we'd rather but there's a way jam it in that. and stay up late than not cover it at all. But there's a way around that too. Let's just be realistic and say, okay, well, this issue has come before us, and even though we discussed we're going to put it on this agenda for the next month, but these two have now come up, which are time critical, move this one that we discussed to the next month. Right. Just so it's more manageable because people get tired as it gets late. One area where I'd like to say I've seen good progress this year is that if two people in a row are talking about something, you can say, my comments have already been heard by my fellow commissioners and then move on. So that's an efficient way. You don't have to get your quotes in the paper or whatever it is. Okay. Okay. We're trying yeah. to get issues on the table and move on. I think there have been some progress there. Okay, so let's move on now to priorities 2015. Now, everything that we talked about is a priority, and I think <laughs> we've listed at least a, an, an ECD date, or you know, the next step date for everything. So that sets our priorities there, but now other things that we haven't talked about. Now the Buckeye Creek study, I think we all talked about that already. Yeah. Okay, master plan. And we also talked about the boardwalk, the events boardwalk. And relative to the master plan, we might want to go back to these ad hocs that we skipped over to make sure, you know, just sort of say, are they completed or do we need anything more? Yeah. Tie it back okay. to that first let's, let's put the master plan on full just because if we get everything else done, then mm -hmm. we feel, because I think we could talk about master plan for a long time. So let's okay. get the other things done first so we feel more free to talk. Okay. Um, does anyone else have things they want to add? I have a few things that I want to add. So, uh, well, mine is the high school pickup games. Okay. I think I'm done. I'm going to have to lead on that. Um, Commissioner Walsh, Daria Walsh, when she was on the commission, she just was passionate about that too. We never made that much progress on yeah. it. But it's since I've been sitting on the commission, we've talked about that, wanting something 
to be available. So I'm, I'm really grateful that you're willing to do that. Something that um, I'm not sure how, as a commission, we do or not do, or but it's definitely something that's on my mind a lot is water conservation um, and how, as a commission, we can maybe create uh, a communication plan or work along the city with some sort of marketing to get people to stop watering their grass or just something like create some sort of initiative and conversation in the community and I'm not sure if this is the right format but I think that since we you know Darren and his staff and Peter I mean they have to adhere to very strict drought rules at this point um, I just kind of feel like there is a way that this commission could maybe uh, be on the forefront of a conversation in the community about it. I'm not sure it's in our purview, but it's it's coming through the, um, the utilities bills. I mean, they're going to start fining you if you keep doing what you're doing. Their, your water rates are going to go up, and they've just had some new guidelines come through the county that are pretty strict, and I, I just don't think it's our problem. It's well, yeah, I think the only aspect that it's our problem is from the park use, whether it be right. the golf course or the parks, if there's places that we can reduce water. We talked last year, I think a little bit about should we more or less intentionally let some areas go brown mm -hmm. to kind of just demonstrate that the you know, parks are behind that. And I think the feedback was the cost to replace that stuff is prohibitive compared to a little bit more cost for water. On, on some areas, that's for sure. It'd be a commitment to say we're going to let this go because we wouldn't just let it go around. Most likely, staff would sod cut and put down mulch, nice looking mulch, and then you'd never have to irrigate it again, except for the bubbles if there are trees there. Another option is the um, native plant landscaping. So there are investments associated with those mm -hmm. transformations. Just letting it go around, less likely, it usually will become a weed issue. Yeah. You, know, you, don't, you don't water it and you have nothing but three foot tall daisies and other weeds. Yeah, I think I brought that up for the same reason as it was a symbol because we can only do stuff in parks, but it might help overall. Well, yeah. right, I guess that's kind of what I'm going to lead by example. But you gave us a good scientific answer as to why that yeah. probably didn't make sense. So that would help. Yeah, right. but we could, I mean, if you wanted to help, we, we are prioritizing areas, little, little landscaped areas, unnecessary aesthetic turf that um, are kind of on our to-do list to eventually transform. And some of it could call for a little public outreach. You know, there'd be a, a substantive change as you walk by, as you drive down Barbadero Road, there's a, an eighth of an acre of turf there, a little tiny section of turf that you could change. It doesn't need to be turf. But people would say, hey, wait a minute, what happened to our cracks? And would the commission want to be involved? And maybe we just bring it to the commission and we can invite stakeholders. I don't know. Peter and I have talked about this a lot. Um, well, definitely for probably so we work on now. I mean, we, I try to cut down yeah. the turf where it's not usable. So, a, uh, you know, Party Park, I think we kind of pulled a lot of it out of there. Yeah. So, Cogswell Plaza, that was one of the reasons to put the seating area in there. Mm -hmm. So, definitely, every time we definitely renovate a park, we're looking at those areas of turf that mm -hmm. don't make sense as far as activity goes and trying to limit them and remove them. No, like in Bowdoin Park, that grass that's right on all of the area, that, that eventually, the long term plan is to get rid of that grass. At Bowdoin Park. Yes, the uh, uh, idea would be to uh, basically have a, a tree grove in there. And we want to a tree oak stand, and that would then the grass would eventually go away and would be removed. And the plan is to let establish the trees before we let Right. Them. Yeah, I mean, so the, you know, the transition is not as fast, uh, but I guess it's more in keeping with kind of the transition that our society is on in general. You know, it's not like a fast thing, but it will eventually be that way. So I have a suggestion to the, the commission to consider, um, much like when dog issues had first kind of popped up saying we were underserved, every renovation was asked to look, could you squeeze a dog park in here? Perhaps a part of every park presentation where we're doing a CIP, there's an element that says water conservation. And it's a subheading of the staff yeah. report. Thank you, you, Great. you double check what has been addressed regarding water conservation. It's all kind of summarized. You evaluate the plans and agree idea. that it's been fully. Yeah, that's good. Okay. It would be nice to document that because I have done all the the background work to figure out how much water we saved on that, but technically it's never published anywhere. I just have an email that I sent to someone that then Brad says that a 
one year, one time a year at a council meeting that we say so many gallons of water, but yeah. it's not tied to anything. Mm. But I, yeah, to, to your point, like part of getting people to stop watering their sidewalks, at least be more efficient, like if you're going to have the sprinklers on, fix them so you're not watering the street in front of your home, uh, is that if the city is communicating, this is what we're doing, this mm -hmm. is what we're doing, this is part of our planning process, this is where we've changed the flora of our parks, then maybe people will like wake up and say, oh, right, I should maybe rip out my grass and put in native plantings or something. Mm -hmm. well, that's yeah. something you could add to, I mean, again, our, our most efficient mailer is the utility bill, which I know doesn't go to everyone, but if you did do like a PR thing, like whatever, twice a year or once a year that basically stated what the city was doing to reduce water, just as a way to update people, it might spark them to say, oh, well, we can do this all day too. So. It, it does go to everyone, actually. It's just that those people on auto pay don't right. always open them, but it, everyone does have them. Right. Well, it's just yeah. the most, it's the no. cost efficiency of sending that out, because utility is always is paying for it to send the mailer out to the whole community is a spending. And they have a huge public awareness campaign ongoing now. Yeah, yeah, see, we do auto pay, so I don't. But you do get it. Right. Email auto pay. Email auto pay. Right. But, but I just but recycle it because I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. I do this. I collect them. So oh, I, just them. I just think it would be more effective that messaging that, that Abby just said, with the po as opposed to what you get now, which is. Oh, you're almost as good as your neighbors in water uh, conservation. Yeah, the shaming. The shaming. <laughs> you know, and, and, and here's this household over here, and it's like, yeah, but that household has three people. We have four, so you can't compare it. And it's just, it, I, the shaming part, I just mock it at this point. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> so we have do I seen have, my mom? We do have an email list now, an opt-in interest list of people who want to be informed of parks and rec-related things, right? Do we have any idea how many people we have on yeah, the yeah. yeah, it's about 50 or 60. That's it. Sounds like we could For the one I send out stakeholders ones. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like we should, we could even tie this in with that as well. But if we were getting the word out that this was available and people are interested in water conservation, that this is one of the places. I don't know if we're the department to be in charge of that information, if there's somebody better to be in charge of water. It's utilities. It's utilities. No. If it's utilities, it's utilities. It's not this commission. It's not really, I mean, I don't know. Okay. So let's talk to the commission and the utilities commission. But I think it's a great idea anymore. to yeah. include in our staff reports of water conservation. Yeah. I think yeah. so yeah. that's great. Yeah. That does connect directly. Yes. And one thing I just want to add on when we're reviewing the canopy plan, the urban forest canopy plan, one thing that I can should made a comment, I don't know if it got incorporated, but we still need certain kind of water hungry trees that drop fruit that, that animals eat and provide insects and butterflies food. So not if we want to have uh, wildlife still living in our city, we still have to be mindful of how water conservation impacts uh, living creatures, animals, and then have a, balance, a, balance, a, a balanced approach. Sometimes my fear with the big drought resistance is that we'll throw all the wildlife out out with it. So I don't know how to, can we just assume that staff will naturally be mindful of that? Absolutely. Or, so you don't I know Walter Passmore and my team are, that, that we need a diverse plant palette, diverse tree palette, and then Peter is, and those are kind of the three, between Walter, myself, and Peter, that's who's going to be leading these. So. so it might just be nice if that's just commented on mm. the staff report. It doesn't have to have a separate section. You know, so or, 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 like, or like, I guess what I'd say is, what is the cost of this water conversation, con conservation? So we're, we're conserving water and we're making, um, <coughs> are, we effect, are we impacting wildlife when we conserve the water? Well, I think removing turf, it doesn't, uh, that's actually probably beneficial. Yeah, I think it is. Um, but uh, it comes up in the plant, plant palettes, palette. the right. tree palettes. So right. It came up in the urban canopy plant, sort of like not wanting anything messy. Mm -hmm. That that's I'm I'm always someone who'd rather have something messy, you know, in some regions of the park. Yes. I think what you're trying to say is that you know, it, taking removing turf is different than stressing out for bearing trees right. without, you know, by not giving them water. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and there's the danger that we just revert to a very narrow plant palette of really drought tolerant species, and soon you have what verges on um, you know, three, three different types of yeah. plants. You don't no, want that. No. That's not good for the environment at all, nor the aesthetics of a park either. So that won't be the case, and I'll be glad to add, I wrote in list of compromises and impacts to wildlife via those water conservation efforts. Jared, there was somebody that you and I spoke to on staff, and I can't remember if it was Sharon or Tommy Kidder, that we were talking about how the city has a sustainability person but doesn't have a conservation person. Right, and it was when we were speaking with Tommy. It was Tommy Kidder. They, he recommended, he mentioned that there's some nonprofit that maybe we could partner with in that aspect. Do you remember who that was? I don't remember. All right, I'll check my notes. But, I, but I, that is something that I feel very passionate about to just have a balanced focus on uh, city staff. Darren, do you feel like that's your role and the staff, or you are a conservation person? I think so. I think um, much like a lot of things we do, we're a small agency, so we defer a lot to organizations we partner with, like U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, right? They've got a fleet of biologists that work in the very same habitats we do, and we can confer with them. So rather than having our own duplicating fleet, we refer to them a lot. And the same is true for the, the plant experts at Actera and Save the Bay. They have PhDs in wildlife biology and and, um, and, and specify in, in specialize rather in marsh plants. So rather than hiring my own guy who just does that, I have a partnership with one. And I can ask him questions whenever I want. I have them review plans for me all the time. Um, so that's how I end up accomplishing those conservation uh, elements of, to the job and what we need. Right, cause, yeah, we brought in a sustainability person. You could have said the same thing. Well, I want to be sustainable so I can confer with these outside oh, experts. But within our city staff, we didn't make a space for a PhD wildlife wow. conservation person. I don't know if they have such a person in Mountain View, for instance. We what just have a lot contract? of open land for not having a person dedicated to that, I believe. Yeah. Rob and I, you know, the way that Mountain View accomplishes that is through contract, right? They enter with contracts with, for example, uh, burrowing owl experts. So they don't have an on-staff role, they just contract out. So that was one thing that, that Greg Betts and I had talked about, was do we under... And when you're talking about water-thirsty plants, are you talking about non-native or native? Well, I, I don't know, I just wanted... It's really the experts who know this when you have this diverse palette. So you're just saying, just, just generically, that we shouldn't just have blinders on and look just at water efficiency? Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. So if we have native oaks, for example, we don't water them, though, do we? We do to establish them, yes. And then once they... Huh? Yeah, they're, they're less thirsty than a lot of the other tree species. And so in general, if we are now skewing our trees towards native, we should be decreasing our water use this time. That's correct. But we still would water some of those in, just for establishing, or there's some... There are some that, that get watered ongoing. Like an example would be how often do we want to plant fruit trees or mock fruit trees? That I, I don't know how that is. For our I, don't that those are, yeah. I don't consider that those are native. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That is correct for me. Okay. So that, that would be a biggest oh. example. And you're looking at? They provide food for birds. As for native sets. birds or not native birds? I don't know. I haven't got, I've never drilled in that deeply to understand it. But I just, I just know from the Audubon Society that fruit trees are important to have within our plant palette. I'm just thinking from the lazy man standpoint, you just plant native stuff, you don't have to water it, and the native birds will be able to maintain it. Well, I mean, yeah. for example, ivy. With ivy, and they have those berries on it, and every spring, the robins come through, and they just clean out the berries on their way back north. It's, it's amazing to watch. So I don't think you can restrict it to native versus non-native birds, because you have migratory birds that use, use those trees, too. Well, and also, it's complicated because on the ivy, it, rats also eat those berries, so that increases a rat population. So <laughs> they're just, I mean, experts study this, and we, I just want us to be mindful that experts are Yeah, I mean, we don't have it on staff. Same the Bay was the organization John had mentioned. Oh, you do that? Yeah, I don't know. But, um, I don't know that there's anything that we as a commission can do other than wish and hope and <laughs> that, that staff would someday have a conservationist. We don't have that, and I don't think that's in our purview to say that, that there should be a correct. 
we don't get to say that, right? Staff, you should hire a well, conservation. Oh. We should say that if we want to say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can say it, we have no... <laughs> we have follow through. But you know, I, I'm thinking by nature, uh, people who become rangers are conservationists because that's their, their passion. That's why they are rangers to begin with. <laughs> the rangers are prohibited <laughs> not approving projects and determining budgets. I understand that, but they can make suggestions because they know what's going on on a daily basis. It's different from a PhD biologist looking at, you know, yeah. but to Darren's yes. point, it sounds like he draws upon all of yes. the richness of the resources that Palo Alto has through uh, volunteer organizations that are willing to help us. And I might add, you know, there's a danger in saying, well, I hired the PhD, this is our expert in conservation. I, I have hiked through marshes um, with PhDs who couldn't identify a fiber rail. <laughs> All my staff can, right? These are PhDs in the field coming out to look at native oysters. And I said, you realize, you, you know how to identify a fiber rail, right? I said, of course I do. One just localized, like 10 feet away, he had no idea. So there's a real danger in saying, well, we've got our PhD, everything's set. Because there's a lot of different kind of PhDs, and it doesn't mean they have the field right. knowledge that you need to to run and make you know the right recommendations. So I wouldn't hang my hat so so heavy on on those kind of experts necessarily. Sometimes having this diverse group of PhDs that I have through this partnership right. may be better in some ways. Well, and I think also having the conservation plans is a great protective yes. layer. So as long as we, I mean, I would hope that we'll eventually have a conservation plan for every one of our open space preserves. You have the CIP right now for the Baylands. Do we have a conservation plan yet for foothills and the Ross? No, the other ones have. And that we actually, when we were reviewing the natural environment, the natural environment element of the comp plan, we put, we made uh, Commissioner Hetherly and I made sure there was language in there to say we wanted conservation plans for all those areas. Yes. So okay. that that would be maybe really what we need to do. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's both in the updated comp plan and I wrote it into the updated urban forest plan. So you have two documents, if and when they get adopted by council, they'll both substantiate and call out for those comp plans. Okay. Anyone else have additional priorities next year? So we've got water conservation. Are you going to have the under crossing? Uh, we can talk about that now. Can we open up the one under the freeway? That's We're not right. getting any more rain this year. I worked so hard on that, Pat, you will never believe it. I asked when we were in our meeting with Elizabeth Amy, I said, can we open it? Can we have one clean out and then reopen it again? And I didn't get that. That's all I wanted. I said, so the, first of all, we took five years to get them to say we don't need to be on a fixed calendar, but we can be seasonal. So finally they decided that we don't close it on October 15th, that we wait until the first rain. I said, moreover, can we do the one clean And They said no. So they, they waited until the first storm, which this year came around December. They didn't clean it out, it's been closed ever since, and we haven't even had another significant storm. So I think at the staff level, maybe if someone's, Darren, if you're willing to take that on, I'd go into a meeting with Elizabeth Ames again. I'm indebted to her for pushing us through the barrier of taking it off of the calendar. But I think this year is a perfect example of why we should have had a clean out and a reopening. Because we are losing months and months of use of that tunnel. Springs in an hour and a half, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <What's the thing? laughs> it's, like, okay. yeah. it's supposed to open on, well, officially it's supposed to open on April 15th. But we've missed uh, this whole months. year it could have been opened, actually, yeah. except for a week. And my family uses that constantly. We have to go over San Antonio Avenue. It's so is this being proposed as a topic for an ad hoc? Yeah, well, those are the thread of yeah. the end of the year. It's so so let's, 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 let's back off of here and look okay. at the picture. So that would be that would be Leftwood's tunnel, so we'd have to add that on to this list. So that would be so I added okay. on Matadero. So and Pat yeah. is adding on Leftwood's. Okay. Okay. Leftwood's yeah. Is it the same ad hoc? Is that what you're talking about? Well, we never had an ad. Oh, what did we do? We did our creek and urban trails for the left goets. Is that yeah. how we worked on left goets? Yeah. So we'd have to form a new ad hoc. And it's it's pretty simple work, actually. It's just going back to that platform and saying, hey, can we get you know this so, done? So let's get the rest of the commissioners that didn't have been in the meetings. We had a meeting last week with Elizabeth Ames. Uh, Deirdre and I have been on the Bixby ad hoc, and we were talking to Darren 
And one thing that came to us is when we go to Bixby now, we park over by Madero Creek and pipe up the back way instead of going the way down to Parkadero. And the thing that you realize is when you park there right off the East Bay Shore, you're very, very close to Bixby. You're less than a half mile away from Bixby, which made us realize that all those people in Midtown just on the other side of the freeway, as the crow flies, were incredibly close to, in fact, probably closer to Bixby than Molly's career is there. But close, they were closer to Bixby than I am to my neighborhood park. That's how close it is. If that underpass, which is being used right now, people hop the rail and go under that all the time. There's bike path, bike uh, treads, and a shoe prints on the mud all the time. Uh, if you open that up, now people who want to walk the dog in the morning can go under the freeway, and they're right there at Bixby. Yeah. So that's an issue that has come up many, 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 many times in the past. And the city has been uh, very reluctant to make that an official crossing. Uh, did you have undercrossing? Undercrossing. You met with Elizabeth Ames about this? Yes. About Nadadero. Okay. And uh, do you know that there's a working group for the trail piece of the bike plan the, that would the, go from, I think, Greer to Bryant yes. or something like that? And, and, that and they wanted somebody from Parks and Rec representing that. Jaime mentioned that to me. On his way out, I sent an email saying, Can I get a dump for you? And one of the things he mentioned is that he just talked to you about giving a representative. But that's a different part. So that's a, they're so Jaime and the working group they're working on a different part of Mount Creek. Yeah, the other direction. I'm and it's that's a more right. controversial area because it has it's abutting many more residences. So this is what we need to strategize around. Is is it worthwhile to break off this section of Mount Creek that goes under 101? Is sort of a separate effort. You know, maybe led by our Parks and Recreation Commission, maybe an ad hoc from us, to sort of say, can we work on this one section sort of in parallel with the working group working on the big, long, you know, the whole creek lane of the creek? Is that and what I, you're getting at? Yes, now? and there, there are a couple barriers. One is that the ramp going down, my estimate is about 9% grade, and for ADA, it's 8.3. Yeah. So there probably would have to be some small, unless you can get. Uh, exceptions. I'm not sure of the ADA rules. Do you know, Darren? How hard is it to get an exception for that? If we have a ramp, it's possible. Okay. So we have to investigate that. The other is that the clearance under the bridge is only eight feet. And Elizabeth said that was problematic. Again, if you ride a bike, if I'm sitting on my bike, and I sit, <laughs> I still can't get eight feet. Eight feet is pretty tall. So I think we'd be okay from a practical standpoint. I'm not sure if there's regulations that prevent us from doing that. Yeah. And we'd have to confer with uh, Senate Third about Water District. Yes, there's the, the politics. Well, this doesn't seem pretty comfortable with that. She's, she has a lot of contacts there now because she's done the bridge mm -hmm. over sure. 101. She had to do all kinds of work with Caltrans, the uh, water district. Okay, so that's going to be two separate ad hoc then? I think Matadero is separate from Lefkowitz. Okay. Lefkowitz should be very quick. Well, You'll either get a yes or a no. Well, there's a budget issue. They're going down and cleaning up. Who's paying for that? Right. But we maybe don't need an ad. We don't need an ad hoc for left, which we just need somebody who's the lead on coordinating with. Yeah. That's almost what it is. It's to go and have a meeting with them. And say, can we do this? Uh, maybe Pat and I can do it because I've already sat in other meetings. It's, it's really calling one meeting. I don't think we need to. Sounds to me that's the water okay, district. Okay, you don't need to move. Issue yeah. though, why it can't be cleaned and open very quickly. I think if it was the city controlling that we would do it and get it done. I know. But I think it's, it's, the, it's the, 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 next layer. the water district doesn't move very quickly. But it would be our city, do Our city does a clean up, don't we? I don't think we do. I think it's they do. I think that's why it takes so long. Okay, done. So we are going to have an ad hoc of one for Lefkowitz, and that would be packed. And I think your staff contact is Elizabeth Hanks. Yeah, I know her well. <coughs> okay. And then Matadero undercrossing. Can I just say one more thing about Pat's uh, meeting? Is it a done deal that we can't keep Lefkowitz open once we build the new bridge over 101? Is Who decided that? Because I think a lot of people... <coughs> no, I'll, I'll ask her in that meeting. meeting. I don't think that's... I'll ask her. Elizabeth. Okay, because I, I was just curious if anyone here knew who had made that decision. So we were pushing to keep it. Yeah, open. we were. Do you know, Jeff? Because we've made this thing. Yeah. Okay. And what's the reason for keeping it open? It's just another route across. It's a more direct people, route. Some people don't like going up over a bridge, and they can go 
down to the tunnel. Especially for commuters. Yeah. Okay. And again, it would be seasonal. Well, we know it's, reduced, never, it's never going reduced to be bridge traffic, which makes it easier for everyone else to cross, so I don't mind that. Okay, cost of occasional cleanup. Yeah. The okay, so, so the water is here. So let's. Uh, How do you want to proceed with now, Darren? Let's see what, uh, with this initial conversation with Elizabeth Ames. What's the next step? Is she going to talk to? She's going to talk to Darren. Yes. Yeah, she, so she dug up some old planning and forwarded on to us. So what, what she had, the documents that she have, has is a feasibility study that was done for the, for the bridge mm -hmm. across Highway 101. They looked a little bit at that oh, when they were trying to figure out the alignments. Uh -huh. So I think she went back and dug out that study to try to see where, where what the barriers are. Right, right. I haven't reviewed that yet. Um, I'd be glad to help both of you guys. We can review those together and see next steps. Um, we'd be probably pulling in Santa Clara Valley Water District and our public works team to have a meeting and talking about it after we've identified all of that. So for now, now let's keep on working with the Bixby and then we may fork this off and do a separate head off if it looks like it's going to be time consuming. You're envisioning Bandero as part of the Bixby one? Yeah, I think so. Because I'm thinking the Bixby one's done. We're hoping to bring that. If you're talking about the, the plan, the interim plan, that is going to be ad hoc. Oh, I see. Not, not you, just I the, see. the group. I see. And then if uh, we may get shot down and this may go away, or if it does go on, then we'll try it then. Yeah. Okay. So should I add it here as a matter of creek undercrossing committee with you and uh, Commissioner Crum? I guess you can mark that down and keep it on the list, but I suspect. Okay. Okay. Um, so there, I'll for fun. Okay. Anything else? Um, I think we should keep project safety net as a as a something that we have liaison with that we have. Do we have a safety net. We we used to have a uh, liaison the project safety net for the executive committee on it, and when they did the uh, they reborn the committee and we were dropped off. Uh, right. and I think can we get back on? Like we want to get back on. I'd like to propose that we get back on. I think that would be a good idea. But uh, it's got to come from them, not us. We can't. There, yeah, the them is Minka and uh, Minka. Whoops, actually the whole. The leadership just team. hired a new director too, so. Well, usually our staff, Rob was, Rob is the one who would be instrumental in helping yeah, he's decide he's that. He's, he's, he's not asked him to He asked what they asked. No, I'm saying he's probably going to have to move off because he's, he's too, too, too busy. busy. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, if someone from this commission wants to do that, I, I think it's great just to have those connections between our commission. I would like to be dead. I'd be glad to share that liaison with you if you want to stay on it. Or no, no, go ahead. <laughs> Five years is enough. <laughs> so Stacy, uh, let's propose that you're the ad hoc of one. It's not really, it's not or is it an ad hoc or is it a follow? It's a liaison. It's a liaison. It's a liaison. Okay, liaison then. Liaison of one. Uh, and we'll see if we can get you in the door. If you can't get in the door. I'm already on the list and I was, you know, going to the next meeting and I've been pushing to get a, new, a director back in there for a long time and are you going to the community meetings or also the exec board meetings? I'm not I wasn't on the leadership committee. See you need to be on the leadership Push for that. Okay. Um do we need any other liaison types like anything to do with the team community we I remember there was commissioner um what's Paul's last name? Loesch. He went to some of the teen advisory board mm -hmm. committees. Do, do, does our commission feel like we need to reach out more to the teen community or would the safety net cover everything? It, it was reaching out to kids and student governments, kids who are interested in local government, that kind of thing. I don't know. I've primarily got my focus at gun. You've challenged. Where are you up? <laughs> no. <laughs> more years. Just joking. Okay. <laughs> are there Six any years. other needs around that that you think can be either of you can think of? I don't think I can take more on than what I've already got it going. So, Pat, is there anything? 
that you already serve uh, serve for? I'm I'm so not. Um, mine's mostly PTA. It's not team advisory. Um, I, I don't know. Do we need to have? That, I think that's more of a. They can come to us with the yearly report. How they're doing. You know, I mean, I think it would be great if, if some, you know, if somebody had time, interest, energy to do it. I think it would be great. I personally don't have. I have the interest, but not the, not the time. So. Um, okay. I went to that senior summit about a month ago. I loved it, but they're only doing it every year, and I would be on the commission the next time it rolls around. It'd be nice if somebody else. Well, if you knew, you know, that's another thing. So you know, you're not going to go. Be a point onto this commission. Senior summit yeah, is sure in seniors yeah. in high school or seniors uh -huh. over sixty five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's another thing. I'm not. I can just make an announcement here. I'm not going to be a point. So that's another thing. Is to like look for more fellow commissioners. We can all yeah. Kind of when does your term expire? This year, October, December. 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 December.
I understand this is what Carol, Carol Rice, the author of the plan, says you need to realize the goals. What, what would be if, if we didn't quite get all the way there? And what if we just kind of lowball? And that, that was scary to hear that someone would those options in this kind of scenario. I understand the need to ask the questions. And so we tried to formulate the answers in real impactful statements. If you went to this option B, you no longer have safety zones for police or fire, and they're not going to come to the calls, or, or things along those nature. Your, your picnic areas are no longer safe as uh, for fire fire safety. So we try to formulate like that, and we'll see what comes. Maybe if we maybe the answer is if we don't get the funding we request, we want to form a team to, to issue a memo. I think we should be more proactive. We have a major safety problem in our biggest park. That seems to be a policy issue that we might want to chime in on. Yeah. Right? You guys have been shot down for years on this. And you know, for us to, whatever it is, make a resolution that there are these three buckets in the budget, and council needs to approve these three buckets for safety in our, in our, in our park. You know, we'll, get the, we'll get the wording right. Mm -hmm. um, seems to me like quite an appropriate uh, uh, action for us to take in advance of the budget. It's not yeah. that's what you say we get turned down. I, I only say that because I think the budget is, is all happening right this minute. I, how is operating budget allocated? And how does CIPs work? Yeah, this comes from the general fund, um, of course, and ASD reviews the requests, the changes and deletions from all the different departments, looks at the overall poll, and sees what's available and divvies it up based on need and justification. So I think we've got a strong, strong argument for why we need the funds, but it is an increase over what was asked for before. So, so ASD puts together the budget and then commits it to the council? Yes. Council. Well, a finance committee and then the council. So this is really an issue for finance committee then? Yes. Do we want to go to finance committee? That'd be useful for you. <coughs> Maybe I can follow the resolution that goes to the finance committee too. Would that be helpful? Yes. So it seems to me like this is a, a action item for um, for a commission meeting, not an ad hoc or for the committee, because we've got all the study done. We just want to put our weight behind it. Uh, it is a big safety problem. I believe the 2016 budget issue is going to be for the finance committee in the next couple of months. There's going to be an issue there. And then we'll be good. Yeah. I don't think anybody, I don't know if anybody else in the finance committee has heard of this issue before, so maybe we have. That's what's going to be done. You can't show pictures of Kimberly Hills from 1990. I really, I like the plan that you figured out a new way around the bottleneck. But the risk now is that it's in little box. It'll be ignored. So we need a letter or resolution then to come before the commission that we can take, that we can act as an action item. Right. And we'll write a recommendation. And transmit that directly to finance committee and to the council. Which I think we missed Tuesday. So it's going to have to wait a month. Just because of public nature of the agenda. <coughs> But you're at least alerted to error. <laughs> if it comes up sooner than that, raise oh, your hand. I'll look for it in my email. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I can find out in that interim period is where is ASD now with the recommendation? Are they putting forward what we originally proposed? Are they putting down a, a tiered response? I, I don't know. I haven't heard. But I can reach out to them and get that answer concurrent with drafting a, a memo. Yeah. And I'm happy to work with you okay. however you want on that. Okay. Or, or, or not at all. But you see it before it goes sure. to us for both. Okay. It, it seems really good that it's moving into the operating budget ultimately, though, because it, that's just a, it, that's a no it thrills is. kind of uh, It is, as long as we, as long as they don't start trimming here and there, and those are the trims that get trimmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pieces get trimmed. Yeah, the easiest way to cut something is breaking the three pieces and cut the three pieces individually. Right. Okay. So we will put that, let's see. So that would be for April. Let's try to get that on the What's the estimation of how much of this is going to cost? Say again? How much, is, how much is the ballpark of this going to cost? The total request for an annual budget is uh, right around like 150, 160,000 a year. For years? Yeah. No, this is the entire thing. So CSD is 74, something like that. So instead of putting it into a multi-year CIP, yeah. it's now a smaller piece. Ongoing budget. And ongoing budget. So same number ends up the same after four years or five years. But. Right, yeah. The, the difference is we had 
um, this would have been a new CIP, right? The old right. one had been funded for right. 250 and covered a certain number of years. This would be, of course. Yeah, I think the only question is do you have a comfort level of it getting it annually that we're not keeping a high risk situation there for three years because you don't have enough to do kind of a surge and get it right. done at once? Yeah, we had talked about that too. Um, I was more comfortable with the CIP paradigm. It used to carry over whether you spent it all on that so you could front load or save money for the next year if there was a bigger thing looming, you know, like a clean out year or something more heavy. Um, but ASD is getting away from those kind of projects becoming CIPs. He said this is no longer the kind of CIP we want. Now we're going to operate from now on. So it's not something they're willing to do. But getting the funding is still great, of course. And if it needs to be an operating, we'll do it that way. ASD administrative services? Yes. Yes, their budgets and okay. catch up do we have to do with the fire? Are we kind of in a steady state now and that or do we think that we're worse than our eventual goal of getting a steady state? Um, we're nearing it. Yeah, we've made we've made some good, um, really good strides this last year. Just knocking out a lot of significant portions along Page Mill Road and inside Foothills Park. Areas that in Foothills Park that uh, people who had been there 25 years said, oh, I kind of remember looking like this when I got here 25 years ago. And, and people saying that as their their grown adults now and saying as children they remember it looking like that. So it looks very different in terms of the, the cutback or lifting up of vegetation the way it once was long ago and just needs to be just kind of all grew in and became this hazard. So yeah, it, we're catching up is the answer, we're getting closer. Ed, do you have anything else? The third plan? Is the only other one you had to add? Yeah, we picked up another one that's in Dabba, too. Okay. Do you want a, another idea for the list? Does anyone want to look at camp, more camping sites in Fertos Park? Is, is that something that, since for the, those of you who are on that 7.7 acres committee, do you think that our commission needs to do any work on that? Or this no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think until the study comes back because it very m may well lend itself to a campsite so i wasn't meaning for that part of the park just in general yeah, the well, question, question is do we need more campsites do we need more campsites right. in for this park yeah i'm i'm personally not in favor of them being on the summer i wouldn't even bring it up then. I don't bring okay <laughs> yeah i don't just know we talked to less about it, it when we were doing the analysis and there's a lot of demand for the tow toll campground. That's why I thought it was Well, I think the problem is that if you wanted to do it, the question would be, do you want to do it at 7.7 acres? And we don't know right now because I dropped No, I, I wanted it to be disconnected. Yeah, I'm just I, saying, in general, it can't be but not connected to the I think it's a general seven. issue that comes up then in our prioritization discussion over the master plan, whether or not we want oh, okay. to prioritize that. There you go. Right. Okay. okay, that's a good point. Do we know is the master plan addressing camping sites? I believe so. Okay. Uh, well, I'll start. I had a couple more to add. Um, Did we get through the first? So, yeah. With, with, sorry. The project safety net. We had. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that I mentioned to Rob, and I wish I had caught this before, is friends groups. I kind of feel like we're open loop on what friends groups do. I don't even know what all the friends groups are. There's friends of the Foothills Park, there's, there's friends like of the Park. And so uh, I asked. We, we need a new one. We need friends of the Baylands Interpretive Center. Yeah. So I asked Rob if he could just give us a list of all the friends groups that work with parks. But he, he's not here now. Yeah, we I hope that we don't have our forum come to the meetings. <laughs> Just so, you know, we just need a list. <laughs> we need to make a whole thing. Yeah. 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 So, we can send you the list. Okay. Yeah. So, I would like two things. I would like to know the list of all the different friends groups. And I suspect some of them are more active than others. Mm -hmm. The other is just periodically, if a friends group is doing something new in the parks, it'd be nice for them to come back and have that either an announcement at the end that Rob, when he gives his announcement, he's just talk about the parks. In the two years I've been on the commission, never once I don't think we've mentioned. What the friends group has done this, the friends group has done that. So just a periodic update of what's going on with the friends group. You mean per park? The, the, you mean the friends groups that are associated with parks? Correct. Just, yeah. 
Okay, I believe there's also one associated with recreation, right? Oh, mm -hmm. parks and recreation. There's one, there's a, it doesn't have perk in its name. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so I just feel that it's open. Not that we want to micromanage what they're doing, but just be nice to, to know, to know what what's out there. Yeah. Yeah, Palo Alto Recreation Foundation is still out there. But they're not yeah. friends of the name. <laughs> okay. And another thing we mentioned earlier with the, um, the Colorado area, that grassy area of Colorado, whether you can use that for a park or a dog park or community gardens or something like that. Are there other areas like that that are city land but not park land that we can use for purposes? In the context of looking for a place for dogs, uh -huh. that was the one that jumped out. I didn't see, I'm not familiar with too many others. Maybe one or two small spots. There's one behind the Baylands Athletic Center. It's a little undeveloped, undeveloped piece of land. Um, it is parkland. It's between the International School and us. It's a little small. Oh, yeah. um, Do you mean with the batting cages made out? No, this is not, in the, not in the former Pasco site. This is closer to the International School. That's too bad. They'd be great fall retrievers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's. Uh, Where is yeah. it relative to the softball? Just right. on the other side of the fence towards the school? The right field oh. fence of the right field skin fence. field. There's an area back there that's just. It's small, um, so I don't know what you can fit on it, but it is a piece of land that's not. I'm not sure of the parking over there by the international school, but that would be actually. I don't know if there's not. None. Th there's none there? Zero. So, okay. They're parking, the, yeah. the parents are par parking in the, main, in the post office lot to drop the kids off, so it's. The, the other one that's put that on hold in my mind is as the levee moves over for the, the widening of the JPA project, it's compromising the whole area, how you even get to it. Um, I almost kind of want to see how that shakes out to know what the best use would be. But but that's another piece of land that kind of fits that model. And then, of course, the Sterling Canal is kind of like the prime yeah. real estate. Yeah. The Sterling Canal is owned by the city. Yeah. Uh, there are easements in it, according to the utilities. I have not seen the map, but from what they say, there's a PG&E easement that runs down the middle. That, well, though it's owned by the city, they've got an easement, which is significant. They said there's three easements on, it, on that piece of land. I would like to see, uh, I, I've mentioned this to Deirdre before, Ramos Park is a great spot for a community garden. Mm -hmm. Big piece of land to the left side of it. That rectangular chunk. <laughs> Why are you using it? Dogs. Great. Dogs use it, well. <laughs> and if they don't use, I go there a lot to their dog meetings to sort of check it out, and they don't go about over to the part that she's talking about. I don't oh, that's where I see it. Oh, okay. But, there it is. Yeah. Those dogs, I think that would be good. Those are like the most well behaved dogs I've ever seen, the ones that are in this park. There would be a great Yeah. There's also room, I, the place for a community garden I thought was also would be neat to look at would be sort of um, that land that we have at Foothill and Rossadero. I think it's called an open space. Is that the Esther something? Oh, Esther Clark. Esther Clark is, I don't know. I want to go check that out yeah. sometime because I... It's an interesting space. It's, it's an interesting space years. that's fully underutilized. Oh, I don't very think anyone so, yeah. ever steps foot on it as far as oh, I can there's, there's deer crossing. Yeah, there's, there's paths that people use, but it's very, there's not one utility on it. You know, there's no amenities on it. It's just... And it's none of the paths place. are made. You know, they're just... To be a real yeah. yeah, so that I wanted... I was always interested in that yeah. in community gardens. I'm There's really hoping that the master plan will help with that. We, I just yeah. wrote in the notes on the, the maps that come out from the master plan just saying opportunities. Well, you've got 22 acres with not a single amenity on it. That's certainly an opportunity for a friends group, for habitat restoration, for trail systems, for you name know, it. There's lots of For Esther Park, are we constrained to develop? If that's, that's just considered general park land, we do anything. Does it have any preserves? It's open space parkland. Does it have any preserve status, any protected status to it? It's parkland, so it has. Um, it's just parkland. Public facility zoning status. Okay. Like okay. all our parks. Okay. Cool. It's very closely bounded by residences, which yeah, makes yeah. it a little different than any of our other places, but our open space areas have this. But. I wanted to mention that I forgot about the dog ad hoc committee. They just opened a new dog park in Los Angeles Hills on Parisima Road. If anyone wants to check it out, you know, dog mm -hmm. parks. I haven't been to it yet, but I've heard about it. I don't. I think it might be Los Angeles Hills only dog park. What kind of 
turf or is it? I think it's dirt. It's near the baseball diamond on Person Road. There, there's a established park there. It's to the north, to the south of Arostadero and Parisima. Arostadero. Well, yeah, it's the the park. The dog park is on Parisima Road, south of the intersection of Parisima and Arostadero Road. Okay. That's very close to all of us. Oh, oh, it's extremely close to all of us. This block is away. Everything else? Okay. Well, the only thing that we've skipped over is the master plan. Because <laughs> so, everyone just so, for that. Yeah, yeah. we're talking about that. We're having a separate Well, <laughs> but that's a. Uh, it's ongoing. Yeah, it's ongoing. <laughs> but. Uh, How about just the ad hoc? Let's that? talk about the stakeholders group and community meetings. What's the status of the community meetings? That is the outreach meeting. Those are community meetings. No, I think they stick, there's a follow up, there's a prioritization meetings upcoming right. for both of those groups. Right. So the first two ad hocs should still be engaged. The master plan survey is complete. That's yes. the only one that's complete. Okay. Yeah. Can we knock that one off? Yes. Yeah, the stakeholders, we only had the one. We've had one stakeholder meeting, we'll have another prioritization stakeholder meeting, and there's three all together, then there'll be one at the end that'll review the plan with the stakeholders. Another schedule is scheduled next? Schedule. No, it's not uh, scheduled yet. Okay. Uh, the, it will be, it will coincide with the next community meetings, which will be in a couple months from now after we've figured out our basic data thing, uh, in, in the prioritization stage, the next okay. stage. So, so our, our guess is fall time frame. Uh, no, I'm going to say it's like summer, okay. June probably. You don't have the dates up for that? No, I do not. <clears throat> we don't have the date set for the master plan retreat yet, do we? We do. We do? No, don't we? We got a Google. Oh, right. We got a Google. Yeah. Okay. So that was uh, yeah, something that Rob and I were talking about. Um, instead of having a separate retreat meeting like this one, would be basically to use the majority of our next April meeting to do the master plan and basically do it at our scheduled meeting. Uh, currently, right now, the itinerary or the agenda has a Bixby Park Trails item on it, and then that's no, not going to be on. Oh, for April? For April. Oh, sorry. Yes. And then the park's master plan. So it's got two items, basically. So if we wanted to have it and segment out a two and a half hour segment or a two hour segment where we just do the basically the master plan stuff like what we do as we retreat. Darren can do his thing at the beginning and we'll move into the master plan thing and we'll just do it on the meeting night instead of having a totally separate meeting. That's a possibility. That's what you guys to discuss though, what you'd like to do. <laughs> as long as we don't have a backlog of any other important stuff to coming through the pipeline, is there anything that... No, the only thing is the big speed part of the trail thing. And, and this fire memo. So, I like that idea. So, well, let's talk after the meeting on Tuesday. Once we've looked at our binders, right. we've taken them today, right? Yes, you can. <laughs> Which we can pass out right now. A, uh, when we can start practicing how to put stuff inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free You're set. serious. You're serious. I'm so excited. I'm serious. So, boy, you need to sit down. Okay, oh, one, one more topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rob talked to me about this. Uh, we had the Junior Museum uh, discussion last week, and we stepped on some toes. Or some people were a little irritated that we pushed back uh, about the, the use of encroaching into the park. Uh, the into the park. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's our job. Yes. To protect the park. <laughs> We, I would and so the, the thought was that this is parkland and it is an appropriate use of parkland. That was their thinking. And then just because this is a run by a separate group doesn't preclude them using parkland. It's not like it's, we're losing parkland, we're just using parkland or something else. I don't think that makes any sense. Well, and so my, my response is I think. We want to have our cake and eat it too. We love the Junior Museum. We think the Junior Museum is great. We just want to see them do everything we can to stay within the footprint. And then at that point, if we're convinced that they can't fit into the footprint, then we would consider going into the 
into the park? And does that correspond with what people views or that we wanted to, because one of the questions was, is, would it be useful for us to have a tour of the, the Virginia Museum and talk to them and see what they need and what? Well, what I would suggest for that is if you want to have a, it doesn't have to be like a, um, I guess a tour where you can show up. I mean, that could definitely be something like a meeting. Uh, but I did suggest to John Aiken that they start to spray paint or stake out there where they are proposing how far it pushes so you can see and develop the rendering of that side of the zoo so you can see it better and how it relates to the park. Uh, I think will help to stand in the space and see how actually big it is out there and what that area is. Because like I said, that area of the park is kind of like a, I don't know, it's just, it's not a usable space in that spot, so. Yeah, what I told Rob is that I'm not concerned about right now, it's not a usable space right now, but 30 years from now, as population grows and our parklands don't grow, I'm concerned that if we have all these straws in the back of the camel growing and everyone taking 10 feet here, 10 feet there, we may have some decisions that we regret. So I'll answer your question. Okay. First of all, we can't be muzzled on something that has to do with parks. No. So no. I hope that's not in the feedback. Um, because we have to be stewards of the park. And any time that there's incremental usage or even a review of there's reconstruction and they're already on parks, we have to consider what are the uses 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So this, there couldn't be anything that's more in our jurisdiction than this, this type of thing. Right, I think um, your question's about encroachment into the park and the size of it. Right. Those are legitimate questions. That's what you yeah. should be asking them. That's and the some, whole process. Right, so. some of the questions that, that, that I'm, I asked and others asked is, you know, do we need that much office space in there? Can that be separate or smaller or maybe no storage? Or storage or some of the outbuilding places. Yeah. I don't know the answers because I'm not the expert, but you know, they can work on that. We can work on that. If it's gonna be a wish list, which in my judgment that's what I see right now, is a wish list and a two story and all that, then I'm, I even made the radical question of did you consider other places for it? Because it's a wonderful, wonderful resource, a unique one for Palo Alto. But you know, if you can't really shoehorn that wish list in there, you know, what what else can you do to, to, you know, to kind of fix that a little bit? And then there's the whole size of the design, which the architectural review board looked at this week, and they were not very pleased so far with the actual um, architecture. So they gave a pushback on that in terms of the size and the kind of lack of what's in the week this morning. Well, they want more. They want it to be more playful. Yeah. So. I think their comments were more based on the facade and the way that the exterior facade looked. They thought they were laid out okay. They actually, uh, one of them suggested pushing further into the park. <laughs> so yeah. if they needed more room, the fact yeah. would be it. <laughs> I just said Can I throw a comment yeah. just yeah. on the procedure here? I think, I think what you said is right. I think that's what I expect the architectural review board to look at in terms of the size. Not the size, but sort of the design. Right. Um, I'm actually not sure who in the city looks at the, looks at the size because of these things, right? Because on commercial projects, the ARB doesn't know what to do. Planning and Transportation Commission doesn't seem like the appropriate body in this case. So I think it's between the staff, actually, somewhere. But the only thing I would say is, I mean, I think this group, like you said, this, this is sweet spot Parks and Rec issue, right? And, you know, we all like John, right? But he's a big vision guy. And, and, you know, I think it's all well and good to ask him to go see if he can use a little of his park space and so forth. But I would just guess that this group is going to have to decide whether you can let him take a park space or not. Exactly. Yeah. I totally make that. And I also suspect we were the first group to push back. Right. Everybody yeah. else was, oh, this is great. And we're the first ones to do it. And if they got upset, well, that's just too bad. Well, that's I'm not the, insulted by it at all. No, the, I don't think they're upset in any type of way. A, uh, I mean, that's why the Somebody exhibits just, that he gave, looked at. Because he gave our chairs to it. <laughs> that's why the exhibits that you were looking at uh, did show all those things. That was not really a part of kind of the original things that you guys were supposed to look at. But I thought that you should see the footprint now, the footprint overlaid with the new, how it all related to the property lines. Those things mm -hmm. are in your purview. You basically. Your purview really is to say, yes, you can't have that piece of parkland. So 
I think they have to do more due diligence to prove that they that is a legitimate thing. Right. The park land. Yeah, I liked your suggestion, Peter, that they um, stake out or spray out. I think that would definitely help out that, that area. visual would help. And then to the ARB's point, that having that facade, that wall thing, very it was very imposing kind Office of thing. Line office-like right. facing the park where from a design perspective and again this is probably not our purview but they have some sort of exhibit something facing out to the park that kids can interact with on that portion if if they need to start thinking out of the box like that so maybe it becomes part of the park activity whatever is happening on that back wall so maybe as a bot a governing or an advising body we would say oh okay so we see this because this now has added value to the park right. instead of just eating well i think that is one key aspect of the design of the zoo itself uh, as proposed now is that uh, it does connect itself visually to the the park which currently it does not. Currently it just looks like it could be someone's house back over there by the, the fence. Uh, that was a main kind of uh, idea of the long range plan of how do we communicate what these amenities are around the park so people would understand that those things are there. So uh, I think developing that and understanding what happens along that facade or veneer of the zoo and how the bathroom building and the back of the house building all works and how it interrelates to the park itself. Uh, it, yeah, it needs to be explored more and developed more and if it is going to push in there more than uh, what, you know, there are things that we can look at and how to uh, make it look like it's more seamless into the park so you maybe not losing uh, space there. Maybe there's more green roofs on that side and you can access right. them right. somehow. So because that design's like that. not... So set in stone at this no, point. No, it's not. No, right. and this, this so, is just going through the process of the design. So it's just all our feedback and, basically. And did they hear our this. feedback that we'd like to see alternative proposals maybe that use less park space? You know, right. ideally no park space. But, I mean, are we asking them to do that? Are they willing to do that? Or are they just saying... Uh, I think they're willing to develop plans okay. that uh, look at how they can reduce the impact into the park. So that's definitely one of the things that they've got to review. Because okay. to me it comes down to this idea of, oh, we're using a park space, so we're going to mitigate it by making something slightly interactive on the back of the building. To me, that doesn't cut it. What really cuts it is an alternative plan that doesn't use up as much space. You can have your one plan yeah. that uses up the space, and then you mitigate it by making that connection. But again, though, it's about looking at the, what is that space used for now. Right. You well, can't lose sight of the fact that that space is it's But right, it can always... Even. But I don't buy that argument because even if it's not being used now, that doesn't mean it can't be used. Open it's space always, is, yeah, is it's valuable open space in its, its own right. right. You can always <laughs> envision uses for space. So by just saying it's not used now, therefore we should use it for this building, to me that's not a valid argument. And also the argument that we're just doing more park activities in the park, so let us come into your park, that's a different use of the land. Well, to have uh, a building on yes, it. I mean the part that they're expanding to. The zoo sits in the park. We so understand that. that. We under I understand that it sits in the park, but it doesn't mean that it just has carte blanche opportunity to go further into the park just because it already sits there. Right. This is the right volume to be talking. So we have eight minutes yeah. left. Are right. we done with the agenda? I think we're done with everything except. This so yes, yeah, so they are going to develop more plans and be responding to your comments about the, the expansion into the park. So. Since we're talking about Rinconada Park, I was walking by there the other day. So there was a temporary structure built. It was like a greenhouse. Yeah, or a right. It's just in a little house. Right, oh, yeah. and the sign says, "Oh, you know, April 2012 or whatever, <laughs> whenever it was supposed to be." Why is it just sitting there empty now? I think they were just looking for a place to use it. I had heard a bunch of different ideas thrown oh, about this about that. Yeah. I, I don't know the current status on it. We can follow up and get back. Yeah, it just kind of looks dumpy and unloved. <laughs> no, you know, it's just there, right? Yeah. We just got to show how to put things in the binder. Yes. These are your binders. Uh, they're tabbed into the different sections that, that correlate to that matrix that uh, we were talking about. 
Um, some of the sections aren't or don't have anything in it yet, like prioritization workshops don't have anything into their tab. Um, I'm going to give you the, which I think you've received already as far as the packet goes, the survey summary information. So I've uh, got that printed out here. I don't know what section that is, section 10. If you look at the, the sheets in the front, basically, and the numbers that they are, tell you what each section of it is. So, um, survey results, we'll see. Yes, so 14 is basically what we're going to be. We it took some time to put together. <laughs> All day yesterday, I had a few people in my office building them. <laughs> Please oh, giving us 14. Yeah. 14. So I'm just gonna let's just pass it around and this you guys can add it in there. I would say that the green binders are easier to use than the white binders because of the mechanism of the clip. So your hand is oh, 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 no problem. Oh, you can choose any color, and then you mentioned. Five just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, this is Abby's copy. Oh, you're passing one at a time? Yeah. Okay. How is it going to be awesome? Yes, you're supposed to be putting this in tab 14. I don't know. I don't know. I do have one for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we already own some of these things from the yes, yeah. and uh, uh, just recycle uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, So while we're doing this, if we're done with the regular agenda, are we done with the regular agenda? Yeah, we are done with the agenda, unless I... Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to raise the Brown Act. And remind everyone, I don't know how recently you've had Brown Act training, but a very tricky area of the Brown Act is the serial meeting issue. And I think there's been a lot of confusion among the commissioners about how that works. So I just want to remind everybody to go to your training. Also, serial meeting, where you run into trouble is if you talk, you can't talk to more than two other commissioners about any particular topic that you are jurisdiction. Everyone's got a 14. Yes, I've are you listening? I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> so the tape is almost over, so are we kind of basically done? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I just want to remind